Mid-September, with leaves spilled like coloured pencil shavings, the streets dicing our town into neat, unfair portions, and me eating that pussy baby. Ladies, gentlemen, and variations thereupon, this is Modern Escape. Welcome to the show. My name is Oodles, the late summer off podcast host. I'm sticky and I come at the wrong time. Joining me today, some call him the space cowboy. Some call him the gangster of love. Some call him Maurice. But we call him Stig. Hello. Do you know what's... What? <laughs> what's really bad about that song? What? It reminds me of that 70s show. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't catch the reference. Never mind. Also, you don't want to. <laughs> also, rolling a natural one and being punished to spend his Sunday evening talking to us fannies. It's Gadget. I oh, know, it's fucking terrible, isn't it? Every single week. Every <laughs> single week. When do I get my reprieve? I never. And unfortunately, Biggie and Candy have got the shits. They're not here tonight. So welcome to the Baldur's Gate 3 podcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Trust me, we will be getting into that in a bit. <laughs> I've heard that song a lot. <laughs> How's your week been, guys? Did you enjoy the storms? I've enjoyed the storms today. It's been fucking lovely. I have not enjoyed the heat all week. I've been dying. It doesn't bother me much. It bothers me. It's like it bothers Indian me. summer I'm... thing, isn't it? That they say you get that really late September summer. Yeah, I'm built for fucking winter. The um, <laughs> and, and, and the problem is with it, and this is the difficult part. Uh, so you know, I've been uh, I've been do- going to the gym every day recently. Like yeah. like some of it's weight, some of it's walking. Well, my new gym, the one that my trainer moved to and I moved to because I like being trained by him, used to be a B and M bargains. So it's nice. just got a metal roof. Do you sometimes find sweets under shelves? Well, no, because the gutter didn't put work out of oh, there. I'd, I'd, I'd enjoy that aspect of that gym. But it's <laughs> it's got it's got one of those aluminium roofs, which means yeah, like a factory. Yeah, Ooh, piece of candy. When the mm-hmm. sun is beating down all fucking day yeah, on yeah. it, and you, <laughs> you go are in, in the a microwave, gym, you it, the, there is no windows in it. There is no moving air, and the air conditioner doesn't fucking work. No, oh, they're just tiny anyway, the air conditioners they're putting them. Oh, no, places. this is, this is a problem, massive HVAC thing. The problem... It just don't work. <laughs> the problem is the guy who... <laughs> the company who put it in, put it in wrong. They used, like... You know, you get that expanding foam to, like, seal in, like, insulation yep. and stuff like that. They put that in the HVAC. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so it's just clogged. I was talking to my trainer about it. I was like, why is it so fucking hot? He says, oh, yeah, there's expanding foam in the air conditioning. It's like, woohoo! What oh, idiot no. did that? <laughs> So, like, I went, I went the other day for a workout. I think I managed. I normally do about an hour at a time when I'm doing weights. I managed half an hour, then I had to get out when I got up off the bench, and it was just like slick with sweat. It was awful. <laughs> I've really suffered this week. Oh, baby, you've been all right, Stig. Yeah, fine. You're one of the girls of summer. You, you love it, don't you? I mean, I get a bit hot and sweaty, and but it doesn't bother me that much. Guns out, guns out, innit, baby? Yeah, well, no, see, the other day I actually cleaned the house. It was really hot. Walked outside thinking, I'll mow the grass, and then just walked straight back inside the house. Nope. nope. Like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we, nah. got to, we got to 30, nah. what, 31 degrees down here. I mean, you should have, you'll should have been the same, Stig, but yeah. I don't know about Gadget. He's closer to the mountains than I am. Uh, the mountains 20, of Scotland. 26, it's peaked up here. Yeah, I got to 31 for me and Stig, and it were nasty. Nasty. But anyway, look, we started a podcast talking about the weather. How British could we be? I know, right? <laughs> that's that's what I want to know this week. I know, I know. But yeah, what I want to know is how are we going to get through this next segment while the man's got the shits? Who's going to take over Biggie's breaking news? You may already know, but he doesn't because it's time for Biggie's breaking news. 
Oh, this was very last minute, but I can't let the side <laughs> down. Y'all know me, still the same old stick, but I just got big. <laughs> Hated on by most of these podcasts with no cheese, no deals, no G's, no wheels, no keys, no boats, no snowmobiles, no biggies. Mad at me because I can finally afford to provide my listeners with new Z's. Nowadays, everybody want to talk like they got something to say, but nothing comes up when they move the lips. Just a bunch of gibberish, motherfuckers act like forgot about biggies. Breaking news. I love it. Into it, mate. Told everyone that you could rap. I've Ooh. told them before. I was not doing the whole thing. <laughs> I've seen when Biggie no. tries to go off uh, more than two and verses goes, long <laughs> and he just runs out of steam. <laughs> What's been happening this week, mate? Has there been no good happening? Oh, bad? Nah, just, just all bad. Just uh, lots of hot weather. That's it. So yeah. on to the Nexus. See you later. <laughs> no, gaming news. Uh, Starfield has surpassed, Starfield surpasses six million players at more than... More than 6 million players, Starfield is officially Bethesda's biggest game launch of all time. It's a remarkable Huge. milestone for the RPG developer, not least because it is home to the established franchises like Fallout and The Elder Scrolls. Mm-mm. I still haven't played it yet, despite having access to it this week. It is really good. Yeah, same. I am. <laughs> I'm using a free trial of uh, Xbox Live, but I haven't done it. Or whatever it's called. I, Xbox don't, game right. Pass. I know everyone's telling me it's great, and it that's just some, there is something stopping me playing it. I don't know what not it is. Asked. Maybe you're not asked. <laughs> I will play yeah. it. I loved Skyrim, liked Fallout 3, did not like Fallout 4, loved Oblivion. Um, and do you know what? I think it's just space and space exploration and building ships and stuff. Not your thing. I'm not really that bothered by that kind of stuff. So, no. Yeah, I will. Play it's not it, like it's not like you sit there reading sci-fi novels all the time, is it? You're more of a fantasy guy. No, uh, saying that I am reading a sci-fi novel at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> There's just no fucking consistency. Yeah, uh, but, you stick. You stress me out. No, I, I am. I am more in. That's weird though, because I do love sci-fi TV shows and sci-fi films. Um, yeah, but you're a big Trekkie. I will play it. It's just I think Baldur's Gate do. is like it's I can't. <laughs> yeah, but I just can't go from one big game like that straight onto another big game. No, you need a palate cleanser, don't yeah. you? Yeah. So I will play it. It's on Game Pass. But that's great. I mean, Gadget, you've still played it this week. Still enjoying it, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I've put in about, I think I'm about 20, 22 hours now, something like that. Um, and I, I, I'm playing it just really casually. And yeah, it's just really, really, really nice. It's, uh, I, After, it's when, when I got Fallout 4, I played that rate. It took me ages to beat that. I was just playing bits, bits. I think their games do. I've been doing it with Skyrim as well. I think their games do warrant. Not binging, yeah. Just like, l- it. like it's with with Baldur's Gate three. Like, I'll, I've been binging that. Whereas yeah, with same. <laughs> with Starfield, I think I don't. I, I can't do like candy where I just like sit on it for like a whole day. Um, yeah, but she has like crisps next to her and stuff and a potty to sit on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She goes full. nappies on, aren't she? <laughs> yeah, she goes full on. She sets a clock up, that clock that she has on her wrist. <laughs> that grandfather <laughs> clock that's on her wrist. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, it's, it, it, it is fun. And actually what I've quite enjoyed about it, and I think Fallout 4 was good for this as well, uh, and to an extent Skyrim, I've not touched the main quest. Yeah, I, that's what I'm saying, man. Um, what, what it's doing... So without getting too far into it, and I, I might talk about it a little bit more when we do our Nexus bit. Um mm-hmm. You know, in in four in Fallout Four, you 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 would pick a faction, and that would like lead you to the end of the game. Yes, so you do like, like the railroad or the path. institute or whoever. In this, you can do individual faction storylines and still go back to it. It doesn't lead you to the end of the I game. Like that. So I'm currently doing one where I'm undercover with the pirate fleet, trying to find out their secrets for the um Ooh. for the quote unquote good guys who are actually they're a bit Brotherhood of Steel kind of dogmatic dogmatic arseholes uh, kind of guys. Yeah, yeah, but. I've got some yeah. cool loot out of it, and I've learned how to steal ships. So, pirates away. <laughs> Han Solo, that's then, who you are. But then, when, so once I finish them, then I'll go and do like the Free Star Raiders and do like space cowboy stuff. You know that kind of thing. Yeah. And you get yep. they're not just like a couple of quests and then it's done. It's like I've put in about eight hours into this pirate quest so far. It's like it's really long. So yeah, it's great. Cool, cool. Next, awesome. So next up is. 
Alone in the dark statement, horror games thrive on the eerie yeah. embrace of solitude, something that is impossible to achieve in gaming in a gaming month as busy as October. To ensure a breathtaking <laughs> experience for everyone, we've decided to move the release of Alone in the Dark to January 16th, 2024. Yeah, fine. <laughs> fine. Yeah. It, it, we it, said this all along, haven't we? With it push yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. Also, do it. Oh, oh, do it. also, it was n- Alan Wake 2's coming out that month, so it was never going to stand a chance in October. No. Alone in the Dark is not a bigger franchise anymore than it, than it used to be, didn't it? it also, used to yeah. be like you, PC wise. Yeah. It also, but, it also does. But like Alan Wake's bigger now, even though it's got two games in its back catalog. But it also clearly doesn't have the budget of Alan Wake. Like if you see like the screenshots no. of Alone in the Dark, it does look good <laughs> and I'm interested in it. But Alan David Wake Arbor looks like good. a fucking film. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. January, mate, when everything else is fucking coming out as well. Oh, dear. Next. Uh, Tokyo Game Show 2023 Xbox Digital Broadcast returns. The Xbox Digital when did that happen? Broadcast will return into game, Tokyo Game Show on September the 21st. The uh, Tokyo Game oh. Show represents a special time each year where we share news and updates on games that we hope will delight Xbox fans in Japan and across Asia. Yeah, they really are pushing hard for Japan, aren't they? Players and, can Japan's ex- going, and Japan's going, nope. <laughs> well, players can expect to hear progress updates from Xbox and Bethesda Softworks and yep. see a creatively device collection of games from creators located in Japan and across Asia. Okay. So, a big big push, yeah. Like I said, big push across uh, trying to unseat Sony out there, but they won't let whatever happen. But... No, no. Not, I mean, even PC gaming is not as big in Japan either, is it? No. But handheld really. nation, them. They love a handheld Switch. is ridiculous over there. Yeah. They love a handheld and they love a Nintendo. Yeah. They love a Nintendo. Speaking of cool. Switch, Nintendo Switch Got- 2 Ooh. was reportedly secretly shown off at Gamescom. Rumors of a Switch 2 have been growing for years now. We finally heard something that seems to indicate that Nintendo is closing to release its next generation console. While Nintendo showed off some of its Switch games at Gamescom last month, the company apparently had more to show behind the scenes. As reported by Eurogamer, developers were given secret access to a tech demo of the Nintendo Switch 2. Um, According to the report, one of the demos showed a more technically impressive version of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Of course, (laughs) Nintendo. They're going to (laughs) release all of these. Mario Kart 8 (laughs) Deluxe Deluxe times 10 times 2 Switch 2 version. Yep. Now, uh, well, now definitely means... upside down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now we can get out of the carts and run. Well, it definitely means That'd that the good, system actually. is capable of higher resolutions and higher frame rates. It's unclear what the exact spec will be. Uh, I mean, it, it's inevitable. The Switch came out, what, 2017? So six years old now. So, yeah, it would be due for a refresh. I mean, I know people mock it. Yeah, people, that's what I'm saying. People mock it and everything, but I... I own Nintendo in getting the Switch 2 because I've had so much love out of my Switch. It's given me so much endless hours of joy. It's my top three consoles of all time now. I've got to do it. There's a, the, the, trust in them. I'll be impressive trust, when it comes do. out. It's just that what is it's just it'll be the same as the Switch. So by the yeah. time that comes out and it's still mid cycle, Sony and Xbox yeah. will be looking at pushing their next upgrades or potential new consoles. it'll be or, inferior. Yeah, and then the Switch and then Nintendo will be behind. But it doesn't matter because Nintendo's always just been its own thing. It doesn't matter. Um, the toy manufacturers. Apparently, though, it said a separate report indicates that the specifications could be quite impressive. According to the Video Game Chronicle, the company showed off the Matrix Awaken, the demo that was shown, showed off the capabilities of Unreal 5 on the Series X and PS5. And that's interesting. I mean, yeah, they're definitely due for a new one. Like, I've noticed that the amount of kind of first party or second party releases for the Switch is starting to slow down a lot now. Where's my Mario Kart? Bastard. <laughs> I think it'll be, it's probably just going to be roughly, maybe a little better than the Rogue Ally somewhere around there, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah I think it's Steam Deck level. Might have probably been a bit like more that. than that, but... Yeah, they've got it now, haven't they? Yeah, I suppose. I mean, I think n- like, we... n- Nintendo always put their power about a gen behind anyway, so they'll probably just make it like PS4 Pro power. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, why not? But Bring it on. I'll buy it. That's it. It'll be playing uh, Tears of the Kingdom at better frame rates and look better and whatnot, so... 
Uh, next stray movie based on the video game, Ice Age Directs is next film to go to Annapurna. Following the success of its debut feature, Nimona, Annapurna Animations is ready uh, to launch its next phase of movies. Chris? Uh, one of them being the stray. Yeah. Yeah, can, can, <coughs> candy's well I, I, I hope it's a silent film. I know it sounds weird, that. But I found the game oddly satisfying, even though the robots they do that. I would keep that, but like subtitled. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. I hope they just do that. Because I think that built its atmosphere up even better. And I think if the robot's like, hello, kitten, what are you doing? I'd have hated that. I, I mean, to be fair, the, the, the directors for Nimona, if it's them doing this one, they, <sighs> mm. they, they have a good eye for visual storytelling. Yep. Because Nimona had some He's, really great yeah. visuals. Have you seen the Red oh, Turtle? Yeah. Yeah, Studio Ghibli like um, cross mm. like kind of film. Um, yeah, it works. If it's good, it works. Like that it does stunning, and that's a silent film. The only the only sound you get is from like the guy kind of the environment yeah. and the guy making like. <gasps> oh, there is like, sound noises. in the film. It's yeah, not, it's a dialogue it's, silent. Yeah. yeah, yeah, cool. Bring it on. Bring it on. Um, next. next. PC and console crossplay is on the roadmap for Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah. Confirmation comes from Larian director of publishing Michael Douse, who told me. I don't know where this, this source comes from. He told me. <laughs> he told me direct. Uh, the he knows people. The studio always intended to do crossplay, but it was one thing too many to get working for launch. Uh, PS5 version comes out, has come out this week. Uh, PC version came out beginning of August, and the Xbox version will arrive at some point this year. They want that out before Christmas, don't they? Yeah, I mean, it was always like Not you said; stupid. it was always intended. Like Divinity Original Sin Two has uh, crossplay. Like yeah. they, they've got the tech; they know how it works, and their engine. I guess it was just. I, I such got, a got my game. save game. I got my save game from a PS4 version of Divinity Two onto my Switch. Yeah, well, that's cross. That's worked. cross save that does exist now. So if I bought it on the PlayStation, I could move my save over. Oh, does it? Yeah, but what what they're talking about? But is you mean like multiplayer? Yeah, so like I could play with you from wow. my PC to your PlayStation. That's what what happens in that game if you just jump into my world now? Is it my world or is it your world? It's, it's, it's kind of a shared instance. Huh. Um, but what if you've done I think, a quest? I think, it, I think it depends on who is the party leader. So if I jump into... If I join your game... Surely I've got to follow you because you've done more. Well, I don't know, to be honest, because I've not done it multiple <laughs> yet. But the way it worked in Divinity Original Sin 2 was whoever was the party leader, it was their game. I've got I've got a plan for that anyway. When uh, we've all finished it, I think we should stream it. Me, you, and Dig, and whoever else wants to jump. Uh, yeah, on. Well, once, we should all just yeah. Once once cross plays out, we'll do that. And we'll just we can do it under the Scotch Sheep banner. Yeah, we'll start up some new characters and just go for it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I think we should do that. Yeah. Cool. Next, I could be a complete bastard. Um, bastard. Next up, we have Nintendo moves on to a brand new Legend of Zelda game and rolls out Tears of the Kingdom DLC. Interesting that. Not I think DLC. that game's jam packed enough. Don't need it. What does it lack other than a motorbike from the last game? Yeah, you build your own motorbike. Exactly. It's true. Doesn't have any. The, the, the Master Quest stuff that it did in uh, Breath of the Wild, it was unnecessarily difficult. The story add on, mm, boring, because the story is boring in that game. So, yeah, fuck Hang it. on. It says here. Based on these comments, it sounds like Nintendo are thinking about the next Zelda game instead of Tears of the Kingdom DLC. However, um, they did not rule out a return to Hyrule of, of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom potentially setting up a third game. So they haven't <laughs> moved on at all. Uh, I, I want them to do something completely different again. That's always been the well, strength of Zelda and Mario is that they always yeah. do something new and different. <laughs> if you just do sequels to them, it'll get... Oh, we're happy with Tears of the Kingdom. I fucking adored it, but I'm done. Yeah, but the, the thing is, the thing is now, like Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild are the two of the best-selling Zelda games of all time. Do you reckon they're their own thing now? I think a little bit like when with FromSoft with Elden Ring, I think they flew too close to the sun, and this has to be the blueprint <laughs> going forward. Yeah, how do you, no more Dark Souls ever again, is there? Yeah, no, you, you, <laughs> that's gone. <laughs> no, so yeah, they, they're going to have to just stick to this format because I think, like when when it was like going from like the N sixty four to the um, GameCube and Wii and all that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. They were evolving on the same th on the same platform yeah. effectively because it was a little bit of an open world, uh, a load of puzzle dungeons, final boss, yeah. and that's how every Zelda's worked since fucking Zelda One. 
yeah. And then with Breath of the Wild, they changed it, and it they sold like fuck fucking hotcakes. <laughs> yeah, so many new. people bought these games, and now everyone's going to... Like, if you try and go back to that smaller design for Zelda, it, they're not going to have it, are they? People aren't going to oh, want it because Nintendo, they're going to want the big you sandbox. Have, you should have learned from Icarus. <laughs> <laughs> the signs were there. You should have You've learned from it. Kid Icarus. <laughs> oh, oh, bring that back. Oh, that would be nice. love that game. Love that game. Cool. Next. Next, uh, Mortal Kombat 1 is gearing up to be a bit of a celebrity fest. Uh, so far, we already have the likes of J.K. Simmons, John Cena, and uh, is Anthony Starr? Yep. Yeah, Anthony yeah. Starr's in it. Yep. Uh, we now have Megan Fox joining um, as Nitara. Is She's doing Nitara. <laughs> yeah. Nitara is evil, but also good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She's very video. evil, but also good. Uh, but perhaps its most perfect addition is 80s action star Jean-Claude Van Damme cameoing as Johnny Cage, whose in-game likenesses um, <laughs> has now <laughs> debuted, debuted online courtesy of the series co-creator Ed Boon. <laughs> I hope he does what he did as Guile in the Street Fighter film. You are all under arrest. <laughs> yeah, it's just vo- <laughs> this is voice as well. Yeah. well they've no, had, they've... Re- really good American special forces. Belgium accent. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that kind of brings it, like, that trilogy of people around it, that trio of people, because you've yeah. had Schwarzenegger as the Terminator, we've had yeah. Stallone as Rambo. <clears throat> so now they've got I Van Damme. I think Mortal Kombat 1's going to be fucking incredible. Everything I see from it, I'm like, just keep feeding it, mate. Ed Boon gets it. Yeah. I don't get any of it up. Oh, I mate, already know that insane. it's again. It's, I already know from the first few trailers, like, yeah, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in so just... <clears throat> it, looks in, it looks insane. It doesn't look as graphically good as the new Tekken, but. What it's doing is doing, it's doing it things the, it, to me. I think it lacks the style of um, Street Fighter Six as well. Oh yeah, no, it, it won't have the finesse of Street Fighter Six. Even Tekken no, can't hold a candle to Street it's Fighter. Going, it's obviously going to deliver the, br- the, the brutality, quite frankly. Brutality. But yeah, um, yeah. Um, it, 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 the, the, the more I've seen, I've seen some actual gameplay, like when they release gameplay, it looks like a fun fighter. Like I can see me send main in uh, Homelander. Becoming a homeland, Stan, <laughs> just playing as him all the time, <laughs> sucking milk at the end. I hope his victory is drinking milk. Oh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still freaked out by that. It's one of the most innocuous yeah. scenes in the boys, and it's so gross. <laughs> or imagine this: his his his, his victory is it? flash. He flashes. You see, you, 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 the camera peers up to the top of a building, and he's stood wanking off a top of a building. <laughs> I think that might be too I'm much. I'm not making either, that up, e- listeners. If you've not yeah, seen no, the boys, happens. that's what he does. <laughs> I think that might be actually too much for Mortal Kombat because they don't tend to have sexually aggressive stuff in there. They just tend to no. be no, they don't. Hideously do violent. <laughs> I'm up for it. I just can't. Wait. I wonder if they're going to put Billy Butcher in as a secret. That would Maybe. make sense. <laughs> wouldn't it? That would make DLC. sense. Yeah. yeah. The just, best ooh. thing about the Mortal Kombat. Um, Team and that kind of universe. <clears throat> that if someone just comes and goes, can we put this person in your game? Yes. They just feel like they go, yeah, fine. Yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you now. Um, I, I don't think it was what wasn't Mortal Kombat 11. I think it was X. The Ninja Turtles. They were amazing to players. No, it was they nine. They were amazing. Wait, nine now. Nah. They were it, amazing to players. It was nine because because that, that I think that was on the Xbox version, on the PlayStation version. You had Kratos, something like that. I know there was something really weird, bad. weren't there? But the Turtles were so good to players. Oh, there's just been oh. Freddy Krueger's been in as well, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Combat Nine, they've had Jason, the Predator, Terminator, Predator, uh, Robocop, was fun. Alien, Robocop. Yeah, everybody. I think there's only us left that's not been in it. Yeah, I think I think that's the, one of the fun things about Mortal Kombat. It embraces how silly it is and how it's much Boney it's, gets it. Yeah, it's how much it's seeped in kind of eighties and nineties nostalgia. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. just trying to think of who else would be cool to put didn't, in there. Did, 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 didn't the franchise start off as, as something like Jean Claude Van Damme the game, and and yeah, couldn't get his like that's all the base Johnny Cage. That's Johnny Cage yeah. is yeah. basically Jean Claude yeah. Van Damme, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, we should get Dominic Toretto in. <laughs> Comes in in his car. Yeah. <laughs> be amazing. You have, you have the tag team cameo of Paul. No, just Walker. so you can then buy it, gadget, <laughs> and kill him as Omni Man. <laughs> just obliterate. Him. Did you see that TikTok I sent you about that gadget? Yeah. <laughs> they, so once these two people started a Baldur's Gate campaign with uh, with Dom and Brian, like it's all fa- it's about one, was, one was playing as Dom, Dom McTorretto and one was playing as Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Just walking around going, it's about family all the time. <laughs> love it. I love it. Love it. Next. Next is, uh, you probably won't care, but if you've got a child, um, this might 
They might care Roblox is coming to PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. Oh, it's no, popular children's game so- platform. <laughs> yeah. Before you before you put this in his in his news channel, ready for this. My lad ran in that morning and went, God! I went, what? He went, Roblox is coming <laughs> on PlayStation. <laughs> I went, finally. He went, I can't wait not to use a touch screen to play it. He's buzzing for it. He is buzzing. It's like, because they still do Unger games and stuff with and Unger games and what else is it that they do? They do Squid Games on it. I do everything on it. It's weird. The, um, I didn't realise it was on the Xbox. So I downloaded it on Xbox yeah. for them because when they're, because they're kids and they're idiots yeah. and they let their battery run out on their tablet and they go, yeah. can I use your phone to play Roblox? And I'm like, no, no, play it on the Xbox. Boom. They go, learn how to use the controller and learn how to do it properly because trying to play a platformers on a touch screen, especially platformers as bad as Roblox. It's the best thing I've awful. got set up on, on, on his <laughs> PS4 as well because of the PS app. No one can communicate with him. Yay. No nonsense. Yay. Because that is, <laughs> that's fucking rife, that place. Telling. Yeah, my my kids are up. They're, they're, they're pretty good with. They basically don't yeah. talk to anyone who isn't from their friends or from school. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Love that. But, Love that. That's gonna yeah, keep my kids. If you're quiet. a listener and you've got kids who and you've got a PlayStation, um, there you go, Roblox. It's got every game ever made inside of it. <laughs> Trust me. There's Minecraft it's in it. It's <laughs> fucking shite. I don't understand it. <laughs> you tried jumping on that, that game. You tried jumping compare- on it. Yeah, it's, it's awful. awful. <laughs> they, they come to me and they're like, I can't do this section. And I'm like, I'm no, not neither surprised. Can I. <laughs> I'm not surprised that you cannot do this platforming because it's crap. It's awful. But it'll keep them quiet and I'll pretend that I've paid 50 quid for it. They won't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go, this has cost daddy 50 quid this. Nothing for Christmas this year. Next. All right. Uh, another nail in the E3 coffin as events collaborate collaboration falls through. The entertainment software. That, those so- two uh, digits together anymore. E and three. I thought yeah, we're gone. <laughs> entertainment Software Association, the organisation behind E3, has parted ways with Reed Pop after 2023's show failed to get off the ground, as reported by GameIndustries.biz. The two parties have now had signed a multi-year contract to collaborate on the industry's exhibition in an attempt to bring it back to its former glory. However, this year's uh, show no go. The companies have made a mutual decision to cease the partnership. Dead as fuck. Absolutely. Not coming back. That is, no, it's never coming back. I think Good. Uh, we've, we've, said, we've said it before. I think over the pandemic, all the big publishers had realized we don't actually need to spend a fortune on a trade show here. I fucking love directs. Yeah, it's so much easier. I love them. Just kiss the fucking the trailers. S- the hype when you're on you're on X and Facebook and Instagram and everyone's hyping it up. There's a direct tonight, and everyone's going mental. That's more exciting to me than E3. And I like going to indie cons, like um, like when we went to Res and stuff. They still exist. Yeah, I, I just I, I don't know why people are pining for an E3 anymore. I don't but get just, it. If you want to go, then being but, in but, that but, crowd. But then again, but even that, even then, for most of its existence, E3 was purely a. Um, a uh, journalist only thing like yeah. journalists and industry people like it was only public for the last two years of it i think yeah and and you think it's hot now imagine being in that convention center in la with gamers uh, gamers yeah but it did give like the likes of candy the, 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 the ability to try and like touch todd howard yes but that's a federal crime <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 has she ever showed you the picture that she took with Todd Howard where she's wearing a t-shirt of Todd Howard that says it just works well, she's grabbing him and he, and, he, <laughs> and, and he stood next to her and he looks so uncomfortable yeah because he's pressing his panic button in his pocket <laughs> <laughs> just found me get me out of here <laughs> unbelievable yeah, yeah so I mean like, hey, I know again, again, the candy machine he's just like that rings a bell, and it just has like this Uh-oh. flash. Of, oh shit! <laughs> Pressing the panic button. <laughs> Those DMs. <laughs> but yeah, again, I I, I do apologise if you do like E three and stuff, and it's always sad when entertainment disappears. But these directs have filled that void for me, and we still get a summer of games announcements. Well, did, 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 did you spot? That. Did you spot that literally about ten minutes after E3, that it was tweeted out that news about E <clears> three? <throat> Jeff Keighley immediately. He loves it. He tweeted out going, Summer Games Fest is back in person next year. <laughs> he, fucking, he fucking loves it. He is he's an absolute such, sniper. Oh, he's such a petty bitch. <laughs> I can't, I'm starting to like him a lot more just because he's a savage. <laughs> he don't give a fuck. He's had people killed. 
I'm telling you. <laughs> telling you. I can't wait to get him on the show. God. Uh, I do quite like it. I, I like his like I kinda like um, him. I like his like terrible segues into adverts when there's like a game show a game show and he's like, Well, if you're not like a federal Japan feudal feudal Japan uh, yeah. samurai games then you'll love this and it cuts like samurai a Costco ad- no Costco advert selling yeah. like nothing to do with Japan <coughs> I just what, I just, I just was, think what, he's what a savage it? and he don't give a fuck I love him what was the one that happened this year it was he was making a transition to something for Final Fantasy I think yeah. and everyone thought it was a new Final Fantasy game he's like no no nope. Order with DoorDash and get a Final Fantasy <laughs> yeah, code like, or something. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. what I mean. You're like, get a code yes, for Final Fantasy fourteen. Woo. <laughs> <clears throat> There's no love link. Him. It's just getting out of it. I fucking love him. I've said this it. It's out there. I'm a big Jeff fan. Then. <laughs> Next. Uh, final game, gaming one. Game a friendly version of its uh, famous noodles in Japan. <laughs> As reported what? on CNN. Oh, yeah, that's not catchy. Show <laughs> the, the, the headline makes no sense. No, it, uh, it, it's because it, you missed, missed off the, the, the brand, which was Cup Noodle. All right. Thanks, thanks, Biggie. Throw me under the bus. Which is one of the best brands if you're going to have Cup Noodle noodles. has announced a truly harrowing gaming variety for Japan available, available in a friendly <laughs> rainbow colored packaging that recalls <laughs> RGB lighting. Uh, game, gaming Cup Noodles will be available in garlic and black pepper, uh, yakisoba. Varieties in Japan start uh, starting September eighteenth. I did not want my noodles to go woke. Oh. It's, it's not. It's, yeah, but it's not, it's not the wokeness. It's the it's the bit in the in the thing where the it's going to keep it'll keep you awake. They will also will. be caffeinated, <laughs> providing yeah. energy for all. It's caffeinated oh. noodles. Oh, they've got to have an it's odd taste about it. Noodles. They've got to have an odd taste because if have you ever tried caffeine free Pepsi and caffeine free Coke? Yeah, the caffeine it has a different. Taste. It yeah. tastes way different. It's I've more fruitier, a isn't it? Better Without idea. It. Just get some plain noodles and cook them in a Monster Energy. Boil them in Monster Energy. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll, I'll drag in soup if you want that extra kick. <laughs> I was like, thinking mm. about it. <laughs> Just when I got out the claw me back in. <laughs> I had a uh, soup in so many months. I miss it so much. I had one and it was rank, so I need to try different <laughs> flavours. My, my off licence has just, just started selling them. It's, it's, I know I'm going to have a heart attack if I drink them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Palpitations, big style. Anyway, like don't buy two... Gamer Noodles. No, <laughs> do not buy Gamer Noodles. <laughs> Candies are on loads. To our, one li- <laughs> to our one listener in Japan, <laughs> don't buy Gamer Noodles. Don't buy Gamer Noodles. <laughs> Um, on to film and TV, as expected, there's not really a lot of news coming from the industry at the moment. <laughs> They're still angry. Um, yeah, pay them. Um, Barbie has overtaken Super Mario to be 2023's biggest box office hit. The Barbie yeah, movie, which, um, which is Margot Robbie's titular toy. Swap her pink fantasy home for the real world has now made $1.38 <clears throat> It's a staggering globally. amount of money. Uh, it's taken it over Mario's $1.36 billion. It is the better film, but I mean, I still enjoyed Super Mario. I did. Um, I still haven't seen it. No, oh, you're not missing much, mate. I'll tell you what. Mario saves the day. <laughs> yeah, it, it's fun. I like. Yeah. I liked it. I, I think I, if, I, you, I if you like really video good. games and you like Mario, you get a kick out of it. So I can understand why a lot of the critics were like, "This is a bit shit." Because I've not but, played a Mario game. <laughs> yeah, if, exactly. If you're if you're into Mario, you're like, yeah, it's fun. It's exactly what I thought a Mario film would be. I'm just waiting for it to hit, hit to, to hit the digital streams. I'll get it. I'll, I will it's see good. it at some point. Yeah. And it's not too long, mate. It's, it's a pleasure. It's 90 minutes. minutes. It's exactly, yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh, Barbie mm. has also helped the US summer box office reach $4 billion for the first time since the pandemic, which is good. Okay, now. Nice. Mom. Yep. So, all that money. Pay them. Pay your fucking writers. Pay them. <laughs> pay them, motherfuckers. <laughs> pay your actors. Pay your writers. Ugh. Pay them. Um, the Equalizer 3, starring Denzel Washington, has provided Next. to be another summer hit. <laughs> So that's taking thirty four point five million in its first three days in North America. Yeah, I said, did anyone want a third equalizer? I don't think anyone wants the second one. Apparently, people are going out to see it. <laughs> the first one, obviously, not... it, it's it's the um, it's a remake, isn't it? That's the original. Fine, the originals, um, I, and I never want really to watch the second. I think the first one's adequate mm. as a little popcorn. Ooh, he's breaking fingers, kind of thing. Yeah. I remember Denzel's enjoying done the a first lot one. better. He's done a lot better. Shite. I, I think the problem one. is it came in the wake of John Wick and everyone's like, John Wick's more exciting. Yeah. 
Yeah, John Wick's so, got better pace. Um, I, I'll mm. maybe check all three of them out. Like I've seen the first, but when Equalizer the third in review, comes out, coming soon. Yeah, when the third comes out on stream, and I might just give all three a watch. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, cool. However, there are concerns in Hollywood that there may be a drop off actually for the rest of the year because films including Dune Part Two, Craven the Hunter, and Ghostbusters Afterlife uh, have had their release dates pushed back to 2024. I love how they think Craven the Hunter is going to make money. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It looks right. Uh, how much did Venom Two make? Not enough. <laughs> how much did Morbius make? Uh, I mean, Too Venom much. One made loads, didn't it? Yeah. Venom my, one my, made my favorite thing about Morbius is them re-releasing it in cinemas because of the meme thinking it would garner some people be, go back. Oh yeah, we've got Morbius is back, and it like made fuck all. <laughs> that is, I think, I'm, I can't think of any others. The only comic book film I've never finished when I've started it. Morbius is offensive. It's terrible. I could not finish it. Off. I watched it like in the background, but uh, Morbius made on its re release 300,000. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. I forgot they put it back out after a few months after the meme yeah, started. Yeah, yeah. unbelievable. They paid, all, paid all that money to get it back. Have you not seen it, Gadget? Of course, I don't bother. Don't bother. I watch these things so you don't have to. I keep I've telling you all of this. After Moonfall, I've started listening to Stig. <laughs> He's not wrong. That's the thing. <laughs> he, don't, he, he doesn't do it wrong. He's not. He's doing about it Jurassic for us. Park, about, about Jurassic World, about Moonfall, yeah. about Morbius. Yeah. I did about a few Matrix months later. Four. You, your Matrix Four, you or Candy or Biggie specifically. <laughs> one of you three, more than the, the gadget, will come on and go. I've watched this. <laughs> You're right. Stick it with shit. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. When I watched Matrix Four, and I wanted my money back. <laughs> I didn't even pay. I just wanted my money back. <laughs> I want my time back, but reimburse the <laughs> check. I'm filming? <laughs> Fucking hell, I've never seen a shit of film in my life. Terrible. Oh, bad. Um, <laughs> until Morbius came out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the Crow reboot will release in 2024. The film will star Bill Starsgard and has been acquired by Lionsgate in an eight-figure deal. So this I'm up for is that. obviously... The reboot for this has been... It, for ages. You know, if, if you're trying to do it for the last 15 years. They wanted Momoa in it, didn't they, about uh, five years ago? Yeah, Man. he was up for it. Imagine Someone the crow being six it. foot five, built like a brick shit house. I'm like, that's not kind of what the crow was. Brandon Man. Lee wasn't massive. No, he was a skinny, skinny dude. I mean, if, like his dad. Like, it didn't need to be rebooted. If you're going to do it, I guess Bill Skarsgård's a pretty good person to do it. Mate, because he was he's great Pennywise. He's a very good Pennywise. He's a very chameleonic actor. He's a very different actor yeah. to his brothers. Oh well, it's not as gorgeous. That's why. No, he's, he's got good. He's got great facial face. expressions. Yeah. He's fa- he's it's got no great Alexander face. Skarsgård, though, is he? Woo. No, but if you kind of look at that, if you just look at fan mock-ups of him in the crow gear, it works, doesn't it? It works, yeah, because he's yeah, just got yeah. that. He's got that face yeah. for it. Yeah, talented family. Mm. Um. Hayao Miyazaki is no longer retiring from filmmaking. Should have given vice president. <laughs> that made uh, me says, laugh when I read that. <laughs> he's already coming back to the office with the new ideas. Yeah. The, tra- the trailer I, I, for his new film looks great, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Well, it's, just when, it, it's just when Stig was saying, that, yeah, this uh, Pelica. Is it Pelica? Um, the Boy and the Heron. The Boy and the, boy and the Heron. The Heron, yeah. You were like, oh, it's, it's his swan song. It's his last film. Two weeks later, he's running into office going, no, Stig, it's not. <laughs> because I'm he's looked more. at the film and gone, yeah, I still got it. That trailer, got looks, it. the cr- trailer looks amazing. It looks like a mixture it. of like of Grave of the Fireflies and yeah. Howl's Moving Castle and Spirit Away. Like, it's there's, like there's enough whimsy and in the wind it as well, rises. Isn't like it, it looks like he's just kind of taken some of the best bits of his other films and gone. I can make yeah. a, a great mashup here. I can't. I wait. think. I think as well. Like for me, because I don't watch a lot of anime or a lot of manga or anything like that. Um. His style is such a visually distinct one. Like I can oh, always yeah. like look at it and see that's a Miyazaki film. Yeah. Um, even though even though you've got like different films under the Studio Ghibli banner, you can tell which one of it which ones are his. Which films. there is. And yeah. it, it, I, it, I, it, I don't it, like that. I don't like that uh, Western thing when they say, "Oh yeah, yeah, it's just it's just Japanese Disney." I think it's better. It's, <laughs> it's better. Yeah. Uh, it's certainly more consistent than Disney. <laughs> Absolutely. But also, but also the stories are just more fantastical. But I, I think it's, I love them. It, there's also a weird thing, and I, I assume you probably feel the same way, Stick, with this one. As soon as I saw the trailer, I felt like this comforting warmth, like something was back. 
Yeah. Like, so, like, like, <laughs> and, 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 and I don't ever feel that when I'm looking at like trailers for animated films or any other films, but it's just, there's something about fucking Miyazaki putting a film out, which is like, oh, he's back. Thank you know you. that if, warmth it, you feel right there? That's the warmth I get when I'm playing Dragon Quest. It's like uh, home. Yeah. yeah. It's like just comfort. If, if you've seen the last Studio Ghibli film that came out. Which I have not. Then, but but yeah. I've seen what the art style looks like. <laughs> oh, just, that film was so bad. The film that's so bad, it brought Miyazaki, 82-year-old Miyazaki, <laughs> out of retirement because he couldn't let Studio's <laughs> fi- Studio Ghibli's final film be the, the atrocity that his son put out. <laughs> it's no. so bad. Dis- was it dishonoured the family with that one? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's just not that. He, Mate, the, the government were in, were, got yeah, any yeah, of the talent. They were an inquiry dad. government, weren't they? Remember that story where they were like, why did this happen? <laughs> you're, you're one of his ex-parts. We need it to be good. Well, yeah, there were a big yeah, fucking issue here. Yeah, I didn't suspect it might be money laundering or something. Yeah, because... they were very angry. They were very angry. The thing about that but film, like, though, like... is like, yeah, the animation's like, it's it's not a Studio Ghibli animation. It's not no. like awful, awful. There is still like care and attention. It's just not Studio Ghibli. But yeah. the story's just shit. And all of a sudden, it's boring. as it picks up, it ends. Yeah. It just <laughs> ends. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. the film was bad enough as it was, but you literally end and you just kind of go, it's just kind of like, and they're, they're, yeah, and they're just, they're, yeah, that <laughs> happened. They died on the way back to the home planet, that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Honestly, it's... Um, Come back. I'll let him do it. Just let him do it until he dies in office. He's 82. Uh, can yeah. someone please figure out how to, like, the gift, you know, the... Uh, Put Secret his brain in a jam of life, yeah, something like that. Or even, even even just the Futurama head technology. Yeah. Ooh, what I actually really want yeah. is, and I talked about this when I talked about Studio Ghibli on Punk's podcast. Find the next generation of Studio Ghibli directors and producers. Oh yeah, there's such an influential studio that has. To, there's got to be so many people out there that Miyazaki's influenced and who can do what he does. Find that guy. Girl. I think a producer, one of the original producers, died recently as well. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, one of the art directors died um, oh on 22nd of August. Um, <sighs> Ninzo Yamamoto. So, yeah, it's... Uh, I just... Yeah. Try and find like the next generation that you can trust to take this studio on because... Yeah. It, it, it does have a name, and it does bring that kind of credibility to a to a feature. It's a massive export for com- for country yeah, as well. Exactly. If you can, once you know Miyazaki's when he does pass away, you can still carry the studio Ghibli name on if you if you trust yeah. the people that are going to take it take have it you, on. Have you, have you seen a picture of Miyazaki recently? He looks fighting fit. He looks great for it. He looks oh, good. Of course, he does. Yeah, he looks good. Hmm. Hmm. The man who eats his anyway. meat every morning. Yeah. Let's move on. Next. Uh, final news story from film is we also, uh, obviously we had we talked, The Boy and the Heron had a release trailer, yeah. um, so you can go out and see that now, but also the other trailer we had this week was The Bike Riders, a film I had no idea was coming out. No, I didn't. A Jeff Nichols drama about a uh, 1960s dream of uh, bikers, three bikers, and it stars Austin Butler, Jodie Comer, and Tom Hardy. I'm <laughs> cracking cast. I had no I idea what this film was. I saw that trailer, it's just like, Watch the trailer, Oodles. I'm thinking they're going, yeah, Oodles will be in for this. I am definitely in for that. <laughs> Big style. Absolutely in for Judy Kuma getting more Hollywood rules. She's fucking excellent. She's fantastic. And, and homegrown, one of your own. It uh, also she's, she's, she's a scouser. We, you know, no but it also... well, my stepdad's a scouser, so one of your own. <laughs> <laughs> it um, also stars Norman Reedus. It doesn't Michael... look like Norman Reedus. Nope. <laughs> Michael Shannon, Boyd Holbrook. Um, oh, why, why? I've told, I said it other week. Boyd needs to get his own starring role. He does. But yeah, that's a cracking, an absolute cracking cast. And I had no idea it was even coming out until this trailer just dropped. I was like, yeah, I'm in for I that. think it looks mint. Yeah, it looks yeah. cracking. It looks mint. I hope it'll let me down. Is that the news? Or have you got a special? That's the news. Uh, no biggie's left us. He's kindly left me with a weird, wor- weird world <laughs> web. Yeah. Florida man arrested after trying to cross yes. the Atlantic in a hamster wheel. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> this is what I needed. Oh, yes. 
US what? Coast Guard uh, <laughs> intercepted Reza Bellucci about 70 miles off Tybee Island, Georgia, miles. on the 26th of August. Officials said that the 44 year old marathon runner refused to leave the vessel for three days. Uh, Mr. I like Bellucci how they call was... it a vessel. <laughs> has tried three similar voyages before, all of which ended in Coast Guard intervention. <laughs> uh, Stop doing contraption- this! <laughs> the makeshift contraption he was using is shaped as a wheel with paddles that are designed to propel it forward as the wheel revolves. Have you, have mm. you seen what it looks like, Oodles? Yes, I have. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> I'll just post it, post it in the chat if either of you haven't seen it. Like the oh, actual yes. news story. It's fucking great. Mental. <laughs> Official- I mean... <laughs> On, brave? Sorry. Are we going to say brave? Or are we idiotic. just going to say idiotic? It looks like when I, when I looked at it, if it's the one I looked at, it looks like an exploding barrel from a computer game, but massive, doesn't it? Yeah. Like a big red. Is that the right I one mean, I'm thinking of? It, yeah, it, it, it's like... It's Cylindrical. Like it's, it's, it's a cylinder with kind of yeah. extended paddles with flotation devices <laughs> in it. In the, in, in the middle of the area he's in, he's got like bags hanging down from the central frame <laughs> with like his clothes and food and stuff in it like that. I, I mean, Florida he's trying to do like this endurance <laughs> thing here, isn't he, from get from the US to Europe. Yeah. Does but he know how, how, how many exactly. miles Please, Just do a thousand, like a, isn't it? Do you like a, 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 a shorter one, maybe from like the You can do it America on the schooners, to... can't you? People do it on schooners all the time. But you, it must you, be you, a smaller body of water he can do, like, right, I'm going to do this one. It's I think you can do several Brazil miles to long Africa or something. I'll quicker. do that. Yeah. One of them. One, one of them. There's a short, there's a, there's a shortest bit that yeah. some ships use but all the time. There's, there's, there's been quite a few, a few like, ish, like um, challenges of, like, like, Olympic rowers doing, like, France to the US. Yeah. Like, but it's like a team of four that do it. So, you know, they have um, you can sleep. ships are sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Fuck that. I bet their arms are disgusting and their legs are tiny. Right, here you go. <laughs> go from Naples, Florida to Cancun, Mexico. There's a little body of water you can do it across. Yeah, he's done it. Probably miles. He's done it. Like, probably <laughs> miles and miles and miles. But there you go. It's better yeah, but, than uh, trying to go across the whole of the Atlantic. Well, the, 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 but there they'll, is also... they'll just say that's the Gulf of Mexico, though. That's not the same. That's not the there, same. There is also this, this bit of the article, Oodles, which is just fucking brilliant. Quote, based on the condition of the vessel, which was afloat as a result of wiring uh, buoys, um, officer determined that Bellucci was conducting a manifestly unsafe voyage. Oh, end quote. Mm-hmm. The complaint says, Mr. Bellucci's voyage began as officials were preparing for the arrival of a major hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> Ding that. <laughs> Can you just imagine, like, if he got swept up in that, you could just see his, like, thing just flying around yeah. in the air. <laughs> <laughs> fucking thousand feet in air. <laughs> Just don't expect Henry Official, Cavill Superman to save you. Officials said he'd refused to step off the vessel and threatened to kill himself. He also I'll claimed kill that, myself. He also claimed that he had a bomb on board. It looked like a bomb. <laughs> officials I've got a small later warhead on board. The, <laughs> officials later determined the bomb had been fake. Oh, so God. he's he's Stop now facing in. quite a few federal charges and could st- have like go 10, prison. ten to fifteen years in prison. Yeah, he's he's mentally irregular, isn't he? He shouldn't be uh, doing stuff like that. That's that's too far, in my opinion. But yeah, lovely. <laughs> Good it? luck to you, pal. Good luck to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for stepping in there, Stig. You did it with a plum. You're great. I didn't have to cue you too oh, much. Sam. There's no there's no delay. It was sensational. Beautiful. You didn't big up the Nazis. Oh, you've just ooh, you mentioned them again though. No. no, but I'm saying you didn't big them up. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Biggie's calling card. So, as we know, listener, as you all know, this is a month of reviews. It's Nexus. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do first, because two of them have got shits, and you can skip ahead if you're not interested, but we're going to talk you about Baldur's Gate 3 for a little bit. All right, then. As a collective. And then I've got a review to do, and I'm sure you guys have got some reviews as well. All right, so, all right, all right. Catches up where you guys are on Baldur's Gate. What's your time? What you what you enjoying? Uh, and then I'll jump in. You by the sounds of it, <laughs> speedrunner <laughs> you. Yeah. Uh, I am sixty hours in, and I wow. am in Act Three. Um, and nice. I'm, I haven't quite reached Baldur's Gate City itself. I'm just on the outside of it. Oh, do you actually get there then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you do get there in Act Three. Um, no. You have in the other two games, in the other two Baldur's Gate games. Yeah, I remember, I remember, yeah. Um, 
but um, yeah, I, I've kind of been doing a lot of the quests in the city. I've been, I've been to a circus, and I pissed oh. off a gin. Oh. And he turned me into a wheel of cheese. Oh. How do you not become a cheese? You have to have a rest. It's just polymorph after like 10 turns, it comes off. <laughs> but you're actually a wheel of cheese that's rolling. I was, I, was, I, was, I was a wheel of cheese rolling around. I did a TikTok Can on you it talk as, well. as a wheel of cheese? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> you yes. got a slice cut out of you, so you look like a little Pac-Man rolling around. Oh, Griff. bang into that. I want to find him eventually. Fucking, ha- fucking hell. You will find him. He's, he's quite a major, major part of yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Act, uh, the opening of Act 3. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, but 60 hours in, I am obviously still loving it. Yeah. But, uh, I'm, what I'm, class I'm, did you roll again? I can't remember. Uh, I did Druid. So oh, I'm yeah, a, you did, didn't you? Uh, Circle of the Moon Druid. So it's basically, I've been absolutely You're abusing Panther Boy. The... You, what? Are you a Panther Boy? No, I'm an Owlbear Girl. Ooh, Owlbear Girl. I've got a yeah. little baby owl, Owlbear in my camp. Yes, yes, I've got the baby Owlbear. <laughs> I don't. Oh, no, he killed him. I killed, <laughs> he killed it. Him. No! <laughs> he wanted the experience. <laughs> no, I um, killed his mum because it attacked us. And then I thought, well, this won't survive in the uh, in the wild. So I oh, <laughs> so I'm gonna kill it. <laughs> oh no! Fucking hell, man, that's dog. that little owlbear has become the right. best friend well, of my dog. It, right. Well, it doesn't survive, does it? Unless you rescue it. So I did. Well, no, it, it, it gets taken. It gets taken yeah, exactly. by goblins. By goblins. Exactly. So you can rescue it. Yeah, but if you don't rescue it, if you if you miss it, you know you might miss it. Oh, stick! Chaotic evil. <laughs> that's what it is. I am pretty much yeah. Uh, Aren't you a drow no, as no, well? No, no, I'm like I'm like neutral evil, like bit like in between. Ooh. Sometimes I'm quite good, but sometimes I'm. I think the short form name of that is Twatty. I, I'm constantly uh, pickpocketing trade. <gasps> constantly, oh, you, you sneaky man. Like, well, I get one person to talk to and do everything I need to do, and then I just go around the back. I'm like, I, I stare at like that. Oh yeah, I love that. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Take mm. all the take all the dies off them. Take all the scrolls off them. Do <laughs> Do a fast save, do a quick save between each one, just in case. <gasps> I had save scum once. The only ones I have to save scum on, actually, when I'm pickpocketing is when I try to take all the money, because you've got to get, <laughs> like, a, a 19. And the last one I, I pickpocketed, she had, like, 700-odd gold in, and I got, like, 22. I was like, yes, have that. Yeah. How <laughs> the fuck is she walking around with 700 gold? That will wear down. No yeah, idea, but you, it's you, mine. You, you it's it mine now. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in and tell everyone, because people don't know if, if they're not in his Discord. I rolled a halfling bard. <laughs> Where did I get that from? This is so really... original, Oodle. So original. <laughs> no one would have ever thought of it. Nope, never. Treble O'Clef is called. I, 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 I don't know. I came up with that name. Just on spot this week. God knows where I got that from. But yeah, it. Uh, I play him exactly how I play him in our podcast. <laughs> so making I make deals with everyone. Himself. Yeah, I make deals with everyone. My party hate me. I ain't shagged anyone yet. No one will shag me. Neither have I, but I did kiss I did kiss Shadow Heart. <clears throat> well, and she came on to me as well. Ooh, so yeah, you weren't even chasing. Nice. Nope. But yeah, um <clears throat> I'm going about the world. I, I I did what Gadget and Stig told me. I did everything in Act One as much as I possibly could. Some things you get locked out of when you pick different choices and stuff, don't you? Yeah. Anyway, uh, I did all that. No major like casualties. No major naughtiness. No major not not like world ending naughtiness. Um, and now a little bit of a spoiler, guys, if you're sensitive to this, but it will happen to everyone. The devil turned up. The fucking devil turned up. Oh, yeah, That's a bit of a spoiler. I, Raphael turns up for like? everybody. What am I like? <laughs> oh, you don't tell me you did a deal with Raphael, you dickhead. <laughs> That's what up. am I like? Yeah, of course I did. Was it by the pale yeah. moonlight? Oh, it wasn't done. He started playing his fiddle hard. But yeah, um, <laughs> it didn't really have much effect on what, 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 what I wanted the deal to be, but never mind. I, 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 it, 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 ha- it, has, it has effects further on because Raphael pops up frequently. That. Yeah, like, I thought it was going he's in, he's, he's in the last light in when you get into the second act and... Um, Ah. That dungeon towards the top of the second act that I told you to that's go to. Where I, that's where. If you yeah, find them I, there and stuff like that. So. Oh yes, because he asked me to go and kill, kill someone kill a dude, for him. Yeah. yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. So <coughs> Raf- but Raphael yeah, pops I'm, up, I'm, and depending on if you do a deal with him or not, that affects kind yeah. of how that little quest line goes. I I like him. He's charismatic. 
<laughs> Did you enjoy being transported to his fucking library? Yeah, he's my <laughs> devil boyfriend. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I just, I'm really loving the freedom. I'm, and, and now when I'm, especially talking to you guys and everyone in his Discord, when I'm seeing their stories compared to my stories, I'm like, how many games in one is this? This is... It is it is quite impressive because like, like... How have they done this? Like me and um, in our Discord, uh, Point Iguana and Xenos, we all mm. have, have characters that are roughly doing the same thing. Xenos is playing like three games at once, so he's like, because he, oh, he's is. well, because he's got a couple a couple of multiplayer groups. Yeah, um, and then he's doing one with the um, Dark Urge character, which is evil, very evil. And when um, I when I read that, I was like, oh, I can't deal with that. I can't no, deal with that. I, I might do what, one might my third playthrough, but yeah, so. Our stories have been roughly similar, but we're encountering things at different rates. And there's some things that they've seen that I've missed completely and some things I've yeah, done that they've missed completely. Yeah, that's what I'm completely. saying. It's, ama- it's, it's amazing. It's it's fantastic. And the, it it this is why over Starfield, it's, regardless of how it ends going on Game of the Air, because it is just so big, it is so free, and you can do whatever the fuck you want. Like, I've seen people on TikTok just, just do tactics of just, like, collecting bodies and you and getting Karlak to throw them at people as a weapon. Yeah. Uh- yeah, I've done that shit. It's that. Oh. Um, it's that. Um, it's one of the uh, uh, rage things you can like do this. Yeah, like frenzy, thro- frenzy, thro- frenzy thro- throw. I've been yeah. collecting yeah. bodies to raise as <clears throat> to raise, raise the, the dead. dead. Raise them yeah, as yeah, dead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You like to make your own friends. The problem. This. This is now. Now. Currently, it's a nine out of ten for me for, for two very big reasons. The first reason, I'm playing it on the wrong machine. I need a mouse. It does need a mouse, doesn't it? Like it's it, they've done a really it's good job awkward. with the controls. But it's <clears throat> how many times have you accidentally skipped a turn by hitting triangle, thinking you're going to thinking you're going to open a menu? Every time, every time. But <laughs> the worst, the worst thing I've done, and this could be a spoiler. So there's a there's a guy called Gale, right? Yeah. This young man, he's got a very sordid history, and if Just you press, if you click on one of his spells by accident, you blow the world up and the game over happens. Did you fucking you know do mean? that, you idiot? I've done it about four times. <laughs> when I've not saved for fucking hours. <laughs> Always quick save. <laughs> take <laughs> the spell off. Oh, you can do that? Go into yes. a spell book and take it off. Just move the spells around. You know, like, yeah. as well huh. as the taskbar at the bottom, you can, like, move shit all around that as well. Huh. And all right. also... If you haven't turned it off, and this is a tip for everyone, in the menu, take off automatically apply like new item to taskbar. Yeah. So you'll get like. Oh, new... I don't have a taskbar on on. on no, PlayStation, that's more for the PC yeah. players. Yeah, it, yeah. At the bottom, they've got like the 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 bar with the the taskbar thing. I've at seen the them. The big big fucking list of shit. If isn't you it? don't turn that off, like you get like a new. If there's a spare slot there, and you've got like a new push, it just automatically puts it there, and I'm gonna find out. I mean, like, yeah, it's not. Sort, yeah, if you don't work for that, it, it might not work for your little loadout, will it? Yeah, yeah I, see, I don't. I don't, don't know anything about Gale because I pissed him off by refusing to give him um, magic a magical tweet. item. Yeah, because I was like, so, Eat some. <clears throat> yeah, but I was so. <laughs> it was right near the start of the game. I was like, well, I want them to wear. Like, mm-hmm. I don't have loads of magical items right now. And he got really annoyed and left, and that's it. I've never seen him again since. I don't know anything about him. Well, one day you might just blow up the world. <laughs> it won't be your fault. I ha- I haven't had Gale in my party, but I have actually quite enjoyed it. As you get towards kind of the end of act, towards the end of Act Two and into Act Three, there's some really nice story moments with him, and he's actually I like kind him. of he's turned me around on him as a character because at the beginning I fucking hated him. I, I like him, right and twat. I've got to a point now where I don't have to feed him magical items anymore. Yeah. However, I did sleep one night, and he came on to me. I went, "Oh, Gale, pal, pal, you're handsome." But you're not mine. I'm waiting for Fire Girl. I'm 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 waiting for her. I'm waiting to cure her so I can bang her. Sorry, Gail. And he probably you, came onto me strong. You're you are you are in you are in the right area to to cure Carlac. Oh yes, I know. I've got the I've guy, got the, the guys are last and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that was a glitch but, as well, apparently. <clears throat> oh. All the characters coming onto you and wanting to like sex you up. Apparently. Yeah. Like, yeah, wasn't meant yeah. to happen as quick and like like it was. It was apparently a glitch. In the oh, he's, he's so strong. He still <laughs> says it. And I had the uh, I had the um, the the elf guy, the uh, camp elf guy. He keeps asking me every night. Come on, come on. Like, I'm not, dude, dude. I would have thought a starring would have been right up your street. But I don't shagging games. No, I'm only. Games. 
Um, Shadow Heart is saving myself for Shadow Heart. <laughs> she got your heart. <laughs> yeah. No, I just don't like. I don't like. I don't like kiss. I don't like doing it. I find it awkward. Imagine if that scene pops up and then wife walks in. Oh no, I'll well, die. <laughs> I mean, just be glad. You're not in your hand. Just be glad you're not um, <laughs> playing a starian with with Hulse and then be a bear fucking. Oh no. The um, oh, that's wrong on all all levels. There's there's a there's a great voice line with um with the starian where if you try because the romance with the starian he has to hit on you generally speaking. Yes, if it comes you try on it first. Yeah, if you try and hit on him before he's come to you, um, he goes, "Oh no, darling, I have something called standards." He likes I to chase, doesn't he? He's he loves such to chase. A I bitch. think uh, Lazell got jealous as well of me because I was having the party after the 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 Grove thing. Yeah, and she offers to fuck you. And uh, yeah, um, oh yeah, Sh- Shadowheart was just like, "Oh, come see me after the party dies down a little bit." I was like, "You pick one, yeah. don't you?" Yeah, I will. And I went to go see Lazell, and she's like, "See you, like." chosen that one over there blah 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 because maybe i'll maybe the vampire is like i'll, I'll have a go with him instead <laughs> yeah like not being now, funny love but you the are second a green point. monster with a with no nose so <laughs> 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 the second point and last point i'm going to make on this game is it's not 10 out of 10 yet because there's two characters i don't like at all i don't like will and i don't like that one the no nose girl i i just I don't like her negativity. Whenever I do anything, she's like, I hate that. So I just don't have her anymore. And Will's dull. I'm assuming yeah, but, Will no, is. Yeah, Will's, Will's OP, though. That's why I. Yeah, have Will's him massively <laughs> overpowered. <laughs> is yeah. it? Yeah. He's a, yeah, he's I've, never, a I've, never, I've never even made him attack anyone. No, he's, no, man. He's got Eldritch Blast, which is great. I thought he, he was just a fighter. No, he's, no, he's a warlock. No, no, no. He's no. Um, the same class that Candy's character is in. Um, in score oh, cheap. He got all the spells. He's 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 got Eldritch Blast. If you if you take him in your party and level him up, there's a add on you get to Eldritch Blast, which is uh, like a knockback. So one. I could swap Gale out for him, couldn't I? Yeah. Um. Th- there's a the, yeah. There's a spell you can get, which the, it's an add on to Eldritch Blast, which I can't remember what it's actually called, but it basically knocks people back five feet. The amount I've of got bosses that'll blow them off bridges and stuff, aren't it? The amount of bosses I've blown off bridges or cliffs. Oh, he's great. And at level five, he gets Fireball. I've got mm. Fireball. I know, I'm a bad. But, yeah, but <laughs> more people doubt, with fireball is the better. If in doubt, cast fireball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, my guys are wizards. That's why I don't even bother you. I never bothered even looking. You at don't Gale. know magic like, people. I was like, yeah. why bother using Gale when he's yeah. just the same won't, class as me? He won't add. So I never add bothered to you, with him. So when he left my party, I was like, eh, whatever. Um, uh, Eldritch Blast is re- is a will, really yeah. really good spell because and Scorched Rays. Yeah, and his yeah. damage his damage scales up really quickly. The last thing I will say on it, though, before we go, we might talk a bit more about this in the green room, but if you're on the fence on this, guys, buy it. It's fucking good. <laughs> so buy good. Buy it. I, do you know what? I, I forgot to tell you about this. Because <laughs> I, 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 know, I, I, know I know you were hemming and hawing about it, Oodles, to, yeah. to get it. Like, I knew you wanted it, but... Yeah, I was on the fence, but I was, I was at work, and I was using my um, phone, you know, to do some remote play on my PlayStation. <laughs> and I thought, I thought, I'll have, I'll have a bit of it. I'll have a bit of uh, uh, bold, bold, Baldur's Gate at work and canteen. Fuck! I fucked up again. Bloke looked over and went, you playing Baldur's Gate? I went, no! <laughs> no! <laughs> and now he just talks to me all the time. Well, that's not a, that's not the fault of the game. That's the fault of you. I know, I'm terrible, aren't I? But yeah, it's great. Um, me, and, me and some of my other pals are playing it as well. We talk about it, it there. I went, I went there. We were at a gig yesterday, literally metal gig, and went music died down. So, did you do this quest? Did you? Like, my <laughs> fuck! It's taking over my life! It's taking over my life. But because it's, it's so fucking good. But let me carry on. Um, I want to review something. I promised I'd review this to some of our listeners. I watched all of Netflix's One Piece this week. Oh, yes. I've heard good things. The, the full anime, though, listeners. That's it. You watched the full anime. I watched oh, well, 900,000 <laughs> episodes in one week. No, no. I didn't no. watch that. I've never, <laughs> I, let me be a disclaimer on this. I have never read any of the mangas and i watched any of the animes on this i was a dragon ball guy growing up i i'm i i mean one piece is like 1999 did it start something like that uh yes so i i just i didn't catch on with it at i've all. got a three month crunchyroll premium subscription through game pass you're not gonna watch them all in three months i know but <laughs> i'm thinking <laughs> of starting do, 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 do you want to no. know how many do you want to know how many episodes of one piece there are go on like 1090 or something 
1075. Yeah, and they've got like full seasons that are just filler. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. No, thank you. But yes, um, Netflix did a uh, version of it, basically live action, uh, mm-hmm. starring, um, here we go, Inaki Godoy, Emily Rudd, um Vincent Riga, lo- loads of people, too many people to mention. Um, Emily Rudd, by the way. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Beautiful and talented. Absolutely. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a show about this guy called Monkey, uh, Monkey D. Luffy. I think they say Luffy, but I, I, I say Luffy because it looks like that's how it's spelled. Um, he eats a fruit, and, and I, I do apologize if I'm butchering the law. He eats a fruit and he becomes bendy. Becomes stretchy like Mr. Fantastic. Now, if I'd have known that from the beginning, because I, I love Reed Richards, and if I'd have known this was a Mr. Fantastic play, I'd have been all over it years ago. But, right, we are burying the lead. I fucking loved this series. I fucking loved it. Do you know what it reminds me of, Stig? I don't know if you've watched it yet. It gives me Cobra Kai vibes. You know that stupidity of Cobra Kai? No, I've watched Cobra Kai. Do you mean I've watched oh, it yet? No, I mean, yeah, I don't know if you've watched One Piece. Oh, One, uh, One Piece. Piece. No, because yeah. I, was, I was just like, <clears throat> am I going to get it by not watching the anime? But by all I, accounts... I get it, I get it. Go, it doesn't, yeah. Um, it's just daft. Everyone in world fights. You know, like in Cobra Kai, everyone in, everyone in LA fights. <laughs> it's just really fucking... God, it's like Cobra Kai where everyone's just fucking fighting. But that's like anime, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Everyone in Dragon Ball's a fighter. Everyone in fucking anything, Bleach or whatever those other animes are called, they're all fighters. And this is that. But do you know what the best thing about it, and I don't know if fans of the source material are on the same side as me, I think every actor in this is so lovable and imaginative and perfect they just lead you along you fall in love with everyone and it's just it's such an adventure it's such a romp it's so daft and silly and piratey but pirates in this world are not pirates what you think it's not um it's not guybrush three you know what i mean it's not them kind of pirates pirates in this i'm out no no (laughs) pirates in this are just superhumans (laughs) do you know what i mean they're all, all got special powers and stuff but it's it's got some really good moments, like some sad moments, some good like friendship moments. And it I don't know what I don't know what it is. It's just captured me. It's beautiful. There's, they've put a lot of money in this as well. Cause it looks great. Because a lot of these things are all creatures and the shark men and stuff like you know what I mean? And there's loads of CGI and it just I don't know. It just enraptured me and I loved it. And when it ended, it's only eight episodes, when Andrew was like, no. I want more. And I, I just really recommend it to anyone. If you just want to get lost in a world for eight episodes, I think you should jump jump on it as soon as you can stick. A new gadget. I'll have a look. I think it's brilliant. I am going to oh, watch it. I just... It's not for kids, by the way. No. There's swearing in it. There's um, blood in it. You know what I mean? Not for kids. I, 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 I kind of want to watch. I kind of want to set myself a challenge and watch the anime the, the anime everyone says God, watch one pace that. one pace because they split it all up they split stuff. it all up and got rid of the film and get rid of the uh, get rid of the kind of intros and recaps they did the same thing with Dragon Ball uh, Z Kai but it's it all that. in Japanese and some of this will probably be me watching while I'm doing other things you can't do that I can't can do you? that if I'm watching it in Japanese so um, we shall see um, but I kind of, I'm kind of, I kind of want to set my challenge and watch it. <laughs> Don't I don't know why. <laughs> I think when when I look when I, when I looked in, <clears throat> excuse me when I looked into it, I think this first series on Netflix covers three arcs in the manga, so they're yeah. condensing it nicely. Which I I don't know. I just love it. It's, this is called the East Blue Saga, I think. And there's like, ah oh, fuck knows. I don't know how it works. These people screaming at me on this the listeners now going, I love our piece. You ruin it. You've ruined my childhood. But I just love it. I think it's great. And everyone should watch it. That's me. Dick. Uh, first thing I have done this week is I've played the big game of the week. And as I alluded to, it's not um, Starfield. No. I haven't played that. I've been playing Sony's big uh, exclusive from this last yep. week. Goodbye, Volcano High. 
Goodbye, Volcano. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I've not been playing. No. I've not been playing Starfield. I've put my time into that. I've been playing Goodbye, Volcano High on my um, little great little game actually to play on the Ally. Um, it's uh-huh. a narrative adventure game developed um, and published by Ko Up. Uh, released on the 29th of August on the PS4, 5, and Windows. Uh, it's a, a narrative rhythm mini game, and it's set oh, it's a in, rhythm game. In a way, yeah, it's set in the world mm. of anthropomorphic dinosaurs, um, and it centers around the members of the band Worm Drama, lead vocal Fang, guitarist Trish, and drummer Reed, alongside a bunch of other school kind of uh, cl- classmates. Um, You'd fucking hate it, so don't even bother looking into it. <laughs> what makes you think? What makes you think of that? What, 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 what makes you, you think that, that a, a teen a, a teen drama <laughs> narrative game where there is not much gameplay other than choices that you make? Like there is barely There's no any spreadsheets on it. It is a like a visual comic. Is the best way. To it. It's it's a. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so it, it's kind of like watching a TV show and making your decisions up for the characters and what they do and what they say. And then okay. in between all that, because you obviously are part of this band, you will make the songs and perform the songs in between that. Like you actually choose some of the lyrics to the songs, so that gives you an option to choose what the actual lyrics for the song is. And then when you actually perform it, it performs those lyrics out, which is quite cool. You're like, he was a dino boy. <laughs> no, the songs are really good. Like the the the, the soundtrack. To this is really, really, really good. Like that's what is it like indie music or rock music? Yeah, kind of like kind of indie indie soft indie like music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, and it's all kind of it's set in. Um, they all live on Pangaea. Um, oh shit! And... Wait, wait, is the meteor coming? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's why it's called when? Goodbye Volcano High. Why is that even darker than I expected it to be? Yeah, so <laughs> it's brutal, isn't it? We've not got no time, guys. We need to do the final gig. It's all about this, like it's teen drama, yeah. but you're dinosaurs, but we'll and there's a there's a impending extinction with an asteroid, which a lot of people are saying is no big deal. Some people are frightened of it. It's with I have not. I've not got famously the dinosaurs were all saying that back in the day. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's kind of got that <laughs> don't look up vibe to it, where like. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, please, tell me that, please tell me there's a right wing character going it's all a hoax from the government no, no, it's all, <laughs> these are the six main characters that the cent- gay. centers around are very much uh, modern day like Gen X characters there's yeah. a couple of oh, non- so they're all left wing good good yeah, people yeah a couple of non-binary characters in within there and love it there's uh, from what I'm understanding at the moment there seems to be a gay relationship going on between two of the female characters but it's love not it. ex- so far, from what I've played, I've played a few hours, so I've not played the whole thing, but it, it, it's giving me that vibes between those two. Um, oh, nice. And it's all about like the, the lead character, uh, Fang, trying to... Sh- they're trying to win the battle of the bands. Like, she, what she, uh, she wants to do is, um, is leave high school and go to her. She wants to be in a band. Like That's what she wants to do in life. She wants to be in the band, and she sees that the, this battle of the band thing is their kind of way out um, because another band won it and they became hugely popular and that's what she wants mm. to kind of to do but the other band members don't really seem to Been there care before, as, mate. don't seem to really care <laughs> as much as she does and and so yeah you, you just kind of discovering yourself you realize that like the your brother is kind of this perfect brother who's like the head of this and the head of that at school and Perfect preset. prefect and all that kind prefect, of thing. Preset. Yeah, and, and the parents <laughs> love him, but they like there isn't much going on towards her. Uh, the parents aren't around at the moment where I am. Like they've kind of That's just... deeper than I thought though. That's kinda intriguing me, mate. Yeah, but I just don't think you like the gameplay. Like the art style don't is brilliant. Play it, say, don't play it. Like the art <laughs> style is kind it. of a little bit like um anime, but with dinosaurs. <laughs> like it's really <laughs> vibrant, nice. strong colours, uh, everything kind of pops. The soundtrack, like I said already, like already, that's really good. Um, oh. And yeah, the the rhythm action parts where you're playing the songs is fine. It doesn't. You don't Not cock, difficult. No, every time when I do cock up, though, it doesn't seem to punish you or do anything. Do yeah. anything. You're just kind of yeah. playing along with the songs, which is nice because the songs are really nice. Um, yeah. 
yeah, really good writing, great environment and characters, uh, really good art style. I think it's only about six hours long. So there is a section which I've just played though, where they do play D and D, which was really fun. Uh, <laughs> did, did that reminds you of everywhere. Everywhere. Baldur's Gate available? It's called yeah, it's called L and L in this uh, <laughs> Legends and Lore, I think something like that. Uh, I always love the creative ways that people have to say D and D without saying D and D. But the, the the best thing about it when they do do this is you actually that, that section when you do you actually kind of play this little role playing bit where it is like an old school uh like kind of role playing game where they, one Angle character top. will come from the side another character will come from the side and the dialogue oh, comes shit, up really? and it kind of goes yeah and the and the, there's no voices other than just like like it, oh that's cool at that point when you're playing that it, it doesn't actually play the voices. Only the DM's voice can be heard. Oh, nice. Oh. And the people that are playing it, the gang that are playing it, are, are really annoying to the DM. He's tried oh. to tell a story. That sounds fucking familiar. <laughs> <laughs> he's got this story and he's trying to tell it. And they're, mean, like, and they're all like, what does he look like? And he's like, what do you mean? You're like, well, can I seduce him? Does he look like I could like like he could be seduced? Like 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 they're just kind of pushing him away from the narrative and what he's trying to tell this big epic fight well, scene. Well, I've learned a lot about <laughs> a lot about that this week. I've learned about height advantage, which I never knew existed last time. Mm. <laughs> guess guess what I'm doing from now on? Jumping up, <laughs> yeah, really short jumping distance. <laughs> it's um it's only out on PS5, PS4, and, and PC. Is it on um, PS Plus then? I have no idea. Um, mm. I'm playing it on PC. Uh, your mileage may vary on this. It might not be worth the money that it's it's costing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'll probably have a look at it if it hits Game Pass or PS if it, Plus. It feels very much like Game Pass fodder. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, a bit like that. Um, so like even I can yeah. get through that. Yeah, even I can get through a little drama like that. Um, it's intriguing. But, yeah, I just kind of like like the. I just kind of like it. I like the these games. Fascinating. I don't know why I like these <clears throat> teen drama choice choices. Because you're a teen girl like, at heart. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> I am. Yeah, like Life is Strange and all that kind of stuff. I don't know. You just, love that shit, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I like those kind of games. They're just the easy Doki going. Don't kill Literature Club. That should be your next one. But they're just easy going and they're not stressful <laughs> at all. And you just Get wander you. around, you choose decisions, you get swept up in all this teen drama. It's like One Tree yeah. Hill and the OC all over again. <laughs> no, I love the OC. Why is that <laughs> my favourite shows of all time? It's the second time today I've seen someone reference the OC. <laughs> California. Yeah, that's well, the that's, end of music. Yeah, that's the end of music. <laughs> I love the OC because it, it came out perfect time in my life where I had nothing to do but watch the OC. <laughs> <laughs> I was seeing a girl and she had the box set. I went, all right. She went to work. I weren't working then. I love, I love the Being OC. a bum. <laughs> yeah, I was mildly in, in love with Misha Barton as a teenager, so yeah, I get it. I yeah. loved them all. <laughs> oh, but the the best, there's the best line ever in the OC, and I'll, I'll always remember it, is where the douchebag kid is talking to Ryan and, and Seth, and he's like, he's saying something to him, and Ryan's like, you know what I like about rich kids? He's like, what? He's like, nothing, and just punches him. I was like, <laughs> yes! <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Probably class warfare, then. Yeah, sure yeah. is. <laughs> I think that's why I liked it. <laughs> but yeah, been cool. playing that. Cool. Really enjoyed that. The other thing I've been doing this week is I have been watching the Vinland Saga. So I decided so good. I wanted to watch a new anime. Um, Attack on Titan is the first special is out, which I haven't watched yet because I can't remember what happened. So I'm going to re-watch the last few yeah. episodes because I've completely yeah. forgotten what happened. But in the meantime, I was looking for another bloody violent anime show and was, i've not seen the new vinland saga but I've, i remember watching the last one and i yeah i was um i saw season two was floating around on netflix um yeah it was still because it, it finished there in yeah. june 20th so june. it's only just come out on netflix and there's like 24 episodes in season one i was like yep that looks good um recommendations from mm-hmm. people saying it's really good and it is really fucking good it's um, good in it yeah, it's a Japanese anime. It's based in during Viking times, during like uh, kind of the back end of the Dark uh, Ages. Yeah, uh, when the Vikings were fighting the English. Um, yeah. So if you've watched Your the show Vi- times, yeah, if you watch the show Vikings with like uh, Ragnar Lothbrok, it's like 
it's a few hundred years after that. Like I think we kind yeah. of get into the more back the, end the, of it. The, the uh, Ragnar Lothbrok, that's the golden age, isn't it, the Vikings? Yeah. This is after, near, near the end. Yeah, this is where like there's Viking settlements in England. Like a lot of the Vikings mm. have uh, yeah. converted to Christianity. So you've the got end a of lot, paganism and stuff. Yeah, you've got a lot of like infighting between in yeah. Norway and stuff like that between the Christians and the and the old yeah. like the Vikings and all their old beliefs and stuff like that. But this follows uh, Thorfinn is a young Iceland villager who basically gets um, separated from his family. I'll, I'll just say that. And, yeah, specifically the same. Yeah, and he ends up kind of being brought up within uh, this tribe, for, one, for a better word. This man called yep. Askeladd. He's like, they're like pirates. Like they are, they are Vikings for hire. Uh, he ends up kind of getting brought up with it with them and training himself to be an assassin. Um, yeah, and he's a very good assassin. He's hard as he fuck, is. and he gets sent off on all these missions to kind of go to, to do all this like scouting and stuff. And you're just kind of following him. I'm only about 12 episodes in, but I'm really, really... the good really doll to get you in, don't they? Really, music's really, really enjoying it. Yeah, the music's brilliant. The uh, <laughs> opening credits is one of those things that I love anime doing where they do like a heavy rock metal kind of intro yeah. that doesn't fit the type of show it is. But it fucking yeah. goes hard. <laughs> but it's not as bad as like, Asama, Tupata, take my hand. It's not yeah, like no, that. No, no, no. <laughs> it's not like that. It's like the Which last I series love of, them. I do of love them. Attack on Titan, the rumbling song. That was fucking <laughs> yeah. banging. But this one's a, yeah. great, a great one as well, which I, I listen to outside of watching the show. And it's always one of those ones where, do I want to skip the intro or not? Mm -hmm. I was like, maybe. No. But I do, no, but I do like the intro. Yeah. But yeah, it's I'm glad you're getting into it, mate. Really it's good, really great characters. The animation's brilliant. It's brutal as fuck. Um, it really doesn't let up on the violence. Um, there's obviously a lot of fighting between between Vikings, between the Vikings and the English and other Europeans and things like that. And it gets into all that. And it's uh, the English acting again. I've been watching this on in, in English because I've been kind of watching it while doing things at the same time as well. I was watching, yeah. started watching it when I was like working out in the gym. Um, that's really good. So if you kind of don't want to yeah. watch it in Japanese, you don't have to because the, the English dub's really good in it as well. Apart from like the start, Forfin's voice was really annoying me to begin with because it's that typical you anime young young kid voice. But because yeah. you because the show kind of moves along at a quick pace, it moves years like just yeah, like literal like years and, uh, between episodes. So he, he he's grown up. He's already kind of in his teens. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend that if you were looking for something that's a bit more grown up and a bit more like bloody and violent, if that's what you kind of want from your anime, you know, rather than some more lighthearted stuff, then The Vinland Saga, it's on Netflix, both series, cracking. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Gadget? Uh, okay, so a uh, couple of ones for me. First one I want to talk about. So most of my week has been spent with Baldur's Gate and Starfield, so... Uh, this review. God, you are into some big, deep games. Tell know. me, tell me, tell me about those gadget. Baldur's Gate. <laughs> tell me about Baldur's Gate. Hmm. I'll yeah, talk about them more in, in the green room. Um, but I'm going yeah. to review something that I did do that I haven't had a chance to get round to reviewing yet because, oh I, my because, because I was, I was, we, we did it basically the week we went on holiday, so I didn't get to do it. Um, but Pip and I watched Good Omens season two. So good. It's really fucking. So Good Omens um, <laughs> is a fantasy comedy series which was based on the book by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. Mm. Uh, they did a limited series of it in 2019, uh, which was excellent, which was based on the book itself. Um, and then over the pandemic, they did season two of it. And season two is based on the ramblings that the two of them got when they got drunk and high in a hotel room after New York Comic Con before Terry Pratchett died. So the outline of the story was done in a chaotic fashion. And then, unfortunately, Terry Pratchett got Alzheimer's and he died a few years later before mm -hmm. they got a chance to actually sit down and write it together. But the overall yep. overarching story is based on the two of them working together. Isn't Gaiman, Gaiman working on that show as well? Yeah, Gaiman is, Ga Gaiman is writing for the show. Yeah, so it's legit. It is legit. Um, this uh, season, whereas series one was focused around what happens in the book and the finding of the Antichrist and all the kind of ancillary nonsense that came along with that 
season yeah, the hellhound the hellhound and <laughs> yeah season two is focused on so we have uh michael sheen and david Tennant playing the angel the zero fail and the devil crowley um who are the most gay coded couple ever in any tv series they are shagging um <laughs> and so the two of them have basically separated themselves from heaven and hell and they exist in their own little world Fences, um, aren't they? Yeah, they're, they're the kind of fences. They're neither good nor evil in either respect. But they are they one of the focuses of the first series was them removing themselves from the bureaucracy and the mechanisms of heaven and hell. They wanted to be their own beings. So Aziraphale is quite happy in his little bookshop, and Crowley mm-hmm. is miserable because he's living in his car and his plants don't have anywhere to live. Um <laughs> and one day the Archangel Gabriel turns up at the door. He's gone missing from heaven and he's lost his memory. And he turns up naked holding a box at the bookshop. And he's played by John Ham, so for the ladies who like John Ham, you get to see his ass. You get to see some ham. And he's confirmed it wasn't a stunt arse either. It's Big his ham ass. Hawks. <laughs> <I'm> ham hawk. <laughs> and I don't want to get too much into the detail of what actually happens in the series, but basically they, no, they, no. They, they, they spend a lot of time kind of working out why Gabriel is there. And then heaven are looking for Gabriel. And hell have found that, that hell have had rumours that Gabriel has gone missing. So they're looking for him, trying to work out what's going on. And in the middle, you have Aziraphale and Crowley. And you can, te- so you can tell that this is a COVID production. It's a much smaller show than the first season was. It's not as oh, grand, yeah. or, grand or, or like there's a lot of indoor sets or kind of green screeny sets. But what you have is a lot more of a Zerophil and Crowley bantering, which yeah, was obviously the yeah, best yeah. part of the, of the first series and the book itself. Oh, but the, the episode one when they're in the Garden of Eden and stuff. Episode one when they're in the Garden of Eden. Episode two when they're um, they're, ta- they're they're doing the trials of Job. Um, yeah, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> it rattles through a lot of kind of Bible tales and a lot of parables. Um, as it as it, kind it's of, not offensive either if you are religious. No, it's 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 kind of. Sl- Gently mocking in some in some places, but yeah, it's kind of mocking it. It's it's putting them in a different. It's spinning the, those stories in a different way. But it, as the series goes on, basically a little bit like some of the flashbacks did in the first series, it's effectively telling the story of their friendship and relationship throughout the ages. So you have them at the beginning of time. You have them in um, uh, ancient Middle East, Sodom and Gomorrah, isn't it? Nothing to do with that. I can't. I can't remember. I think it's in the book. Yeah, that's in the that's in the book. They're not in this second series. Yeah, um, yeah. You, you have them in Victorian Edinburgh. All right, oh yeah, yeah. Where it kind of alludes to them being Burke and Hare, which I thought was really yeah. funny. Yeah, I, love, I love that. I love that. Um, <clears throat> all the way up to the modern time. They, they, they were, and it's it's making a lot of what was implicit in the first series quite explicit, and it's just fucking lovely. It's really lovely. At times, it's such a good show. And I think you can see where the strings are being pulled and you can see where the creaks are in it and all that, but the show is absolutely carried by the two stars. Like, Michael Sheen and David Tennant are so fucking good. They were they were born to play these roles. They're so good at them. And, they, yeah, they and obviously, they are such good friends in real life that they have that chemistry together. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really good. It's seven episodes. It's worth just binging. You've through. watched a lot of them this year, haven't you? Them two. <laughs> I do. I, well, I mean, I really like them. And episodes, uh, not episodes, yeah, um, staged. staged. Staged is really good. But they're yeah, just lovely to watch on screen together because they have that friend, friendly chemistry. I, I was I was listening to someone, some other podcast, and they were like, they're like, imagine them two doing Holmes and Watson. I was like, oh, oh yeah. Oh, but which one would be you, Holmes you, and which you, one would be Watson? That's the conundrum, mate. Sheen That's a conundrum. Holmes. Sheen's got to be Watson. I mean, see, no, I would see Sheen as Holmes and and Tennant as Watson. Yeah, you reckon? Swap it around. I guess it depends yeah, on how it depends I on see. how you'd want to play it. Because if you want to do it like a bit the Guy Ritchie one, where it's a bit no, I don't mean punching, knocking people no, out. Because I oh, I see Michael Sheen more as a he just seems more of a leader. Just the way they look. Okay. Like yeah, 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 the yeah, way yeah. he looks and carries himself, I see him more as like a man in charge, and tenant being like the kind of one following bumbling him, and have bumbling around, but with him actually, actually unraveling all the mysteries, but actually being the one that's <laughs> doing a lot of the stuff. Yeah, but like I just I see that that's the dynamic I see working okay. better for them too. Yeah, um, I'd also, love it. I'd love it. Also, as well, like the, the, um, there is everybody in this show. 
everybody oh, yeah. is in this. So this is oh, yeah. this is just the featured actors that, <clears throat> that are in this show. Uh, Rhys Shearsmith, Mark Gattis, and Steve Pemberton. So you get a, basically a, a League of Gentlemen reunion. Hello. Um, where's series two? Uh, Abigail Laurie. And uh, Neve yeah. Walsh as a as a Nazi agent. Yes. Um, you get my namesake, Tim Downey. Um, he, yep. He's in a Donna Preston, Elizabeth Barrington, Sean Phillips, Pete Furman. Um, uh, shit, there was someone else. Oh, yeah. Um, people in it. Uh, Ty Tennant turns up at one point, so David yep. Tennant's son. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's just one of these things. Uh, Derek Jacoby, he turns up at the very oh, end of the season. Oh. Mate, when David Jacob is in anything, I've got to, I can't stop looking at him. He's 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 marvelous. Is it? <laughs> um, who else? Uh, it's Martin Richardson, Derek Jacoby, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, Francis McDormand. Yeah, everyone's yeah. in this, so it is absolutely worth watching. They're on uh, both seasons of Amazon Prime. It's twelve episodes. Oh, don't forget, one. don't forget uh, Michael McKean as well. Well, Michael McKean's in the first which... season. He's not in the second one. Yeah, he's not. Is he? No, oh, but he was brilliant in that though. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's very very good in the first season. But this, witch hunter general, uh, isn't it? yeah, witch hunter general, Pl- with a Scottish accent as well, which is impressive for an American actor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's true. Uh, true. So yeah, watch. There's 12 episodes in total. It's absolutely worth your time to watch. They are so it good. Is. Um, the other thing I want to talk about quickly is uh, just so Oodles has five things to put on his artwork. I've got six already. Oh, well. <laughs> but you can keep going. Keep going. I've only watched the first episode of this one, so it's a very quick review. Okay. So. In the early 2000s, when we were like 18 years old and we were hungover, and on a Saturday morning, what was the best thing to I watch? I weren't 18 in the early 2000s, you cheeky shit. Shut <laughs> up, you know you were. Um, I went. The best thing to watch when you were hungover was on Challenge TV at 11 o'clock on a Saturday, and it was Takeshi's Castle. Oh, it's back, in it? It's fucking back! They've done a new series no of way. it. No way. Yeah. Ain't he dead? Who? Takeshi? Yeah. It didn't exist. The made up character. The guy, the the guy in the, the pink fucking army suit. <laughs> no, he, he dead. he's dead. Yeah, they've got a new general. Yeah, yeah just, oh, that's the, all right. Then. The legacy lives on. Legacy lives on. <laughs> yeah. So uh, basically, the production company who originally made it in April made a new series in Japan. Um, oh. And they updated Please tell everything. Me it's Craig Charles. It's not Craig Charles, but the thing is, it's better, right? Okay, so uh-huh. so if you think back to the, the the way it was done on Challenge TV back in the day, back in the yep. day. It was Takeshi's Castle in Japan is an hour long TV show in the UK. Yeah, for, we for, cut for it the down, UK, didn't it was the... cut down. It had a yeah. kind of racist theme tune. It also had Craig Charles. You could hear him sniffing on. You on could Mike hear him sniffing. And yeah, taking the piss out of Jap- Japanese people all yeah. the way through it. <laughs> so what we have for 2023, we get the full episode, including all oh. of the mad in between game shit. Not translated. Yeah. It's completely context-free, including digital sets where these guys in fucking traditional uh, traditional outfits are sat there. Pl- as the as, storylines, don't they, on the original yeah, stuff? As, as Takeshi's generals <laughs> plotting yeah. over, over over how they're going to beat the invaders. <laughs> a virtual Takeshi head that looks like it was done yeah. on a PS1. Like Zordon. Like Zordon, yeah. <laughs> Um, you also get like cutaways a little bit like in uh, Total Wipeout you get like cutaways to the actual players people chatting don't they and people yeah. chatting again not translated we don't know what they're saying sorry I just knocked over horn they're all there. going yes um, let's go and, it's, <laughs> and for us it's being co- uh, commentated on by Ramesh Ranganathan and Tom Davis oh it's Wolf good it's good because Tom Davis is very excited to be there and Ramesh wants to be anywhere but there he hates living <laughs> that man hates living <laughs> So I, I saw a TikTok room this week and it was just like, you know what pisses me off? Sorry, Ginger. Like, when, when, when it's hot and we complain about it being hot, don't then say, well, you'd only complain if it was cold. Because, yeah, I would, because then it'd be too cold. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> Give me that balance. Yeah, it's like, you know, just because if you're in the Sahara Desert and you were, and you were hot, you, you know, to say, oh, well, if you're in the Antarctic, yeah. you'd be too cold. It's like, yeah, the bullshit situations. <laughs> Why can't everything be 12 degrees <laughs> every day? What's, so so what, what's good about their commentary on this one is that they're not taking the piss out of the people. They're laughing when they fall uh-huh. over or whatever. Well, yeah. So there's a... I'm going to put like a little content one here. There was a phrase that Craig Charles always used to say in Takeshi's Castle, well, we go. which I didn't like because I always thought it was a little bit racist, and I'm just basically saying it for the context. I used to call them 
happy clappy jappy chappies. Yes, he did. There's none of that in this. Yes. They are respectful of the people. They are taking the piss out of them, but in like that the way Graham Norton takes the piss out of people in Eurovision, you know? Um <laughs> Don't say, I've never watched Eurovision. Is that what I do? You can take the piss out and laugh at people falling Absolutely. over and, and getting hit but by not things. not the culture. And, yeah. Yeah, that's the problem. Craig not, Charles, the, it's not the culture, Craig, just laugh at people hurting yeah. themselves. Yeah. Craig, Craig, exactly. <laughs> Craig Charles made it a little bit too much about them being Japanese. It was horrendous. <laughs> it was really bad when you look back at it. Was it uh, also, because it's 2023, the sets have been updated, so things look a little bit less like a plague pit. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Everything's a bit more brightly coloured and doesn't look like oh, people wow. ru- people running across the Korean border, for instance. So, because <laughs> well, it did, well, well, it, it did because considering the first game is border wall. <laughs> yeah. Quick, get him! Kim Jong's coming fire! Yeah. So, yeah, it's really oh, wow. it's really good and it's really slick. And there's, I think it's about eight episodes on Amazon Prime. It's oh, really- it's on Prime. It's on Prime yet, and included with Prime. You don't have to buy it. Oh, I wouldn't. You know I wouldn't. Oh, no, you wouldn't. Um, <laughs> but no, oh, it's, 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 it's really good, and it's all the same game. So, like, Stepping Stones, uh, the, the surfboard that goes around. Maze with the Doors is in there. They've just Let's updated it and made the it... Uh, they've, they've just updated it and made it look better. That's all. And and we, is that what we were watching at that first pod, mate? Or were we watching something different? No, we weren't watching Takeshi's Castle. Castle. We were watching something very no, similar. No, not no, that okay, first can, one. Can, 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 oh. the, the, the first one, Candy was just putting on some random Japanese game shows that were just being cruel to people. Of course she <laughs> was. It was still would. funny, Of course though. she is. It was still hilarious, but... <laughs> bless, bless. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, so, yeah, watch that. It's great. It's just silly fun. Right. Have we got any feedback? We do. We have a couple of bits from the usual offenders. Super Natty Cat starting us off with... Uh, that comment last week about my Twitter treasure maps of wisdom I've taken to heart, which only means I'm going to continue feeding back on this platform alone. Mwahahaha. I've got a plan for that. This week I watched the entire season of One Piece on Netflix. Being a mild fan of the anime but getting lost in the many episodes, I appreciate both platforms for the story to be told. The anime has a lot of filler. Think Bleach times Dragon Ball. So I was sceptical of the live action could get across. I think it's done spectacularly well. There's literally hundreds more episodes of content to get through. We haven't even met all the main characters yet. But the way it tells the story Mm. and introduces the characters at the same time is on point. And the casting is superb. Huge shout out Ah. to the actor who plays Sanji. I heard in real life he took up a culinary class and martial arts as hobbies so he could feel more connected to the person he was playing. Then cooked for the crew on set. The guy playing Luffy captures the innocence and sense of justice. I just wanted to give him a big kutch the entire series. Do you know what's funny about the guy that plays Sanji as well? It's like... A, a Japanese anime thing, but they give him a roadman accent. He talks like a roadman. It's just like, in it. It is that. It's cool. Some cool. of the set design feels a little cheap and the CGI fell down in places, but everything else being so fab makes up for it. And I think next season, with the huge following the live action has now, more time and money can be invested in these. I hope they just don't do an Umbrella Academy where they fuck around with the story so much it cocks up the character arts and stops making sense. Gerard Way wrote a banger of a comic just for Netflix to shit all over it. And same for never Doom Patrol, it. but that was Warner Brothers. This I never read the Doom Patrol. I Doom Patrol I've never read the comic for Umbrella Academy, so I just watched the TV show and really enjoy it. But that's because I've not. Yeah. I've you don't have the history. She's right, though. I've got no one piece of reference. Fucking mint. She's right. She's this, for once. This week, Stuarticus has been watching Ahsoka on Disney. Plus. Is it Ahsoka or Ashoka? No idea. I've not, watched, I've not started it yet. It's got a uh, hitch in it, though, isn't it? That's yeah, that, that's why I get confused. Unfortunately, it's not a hit. The story made no sense to him and not enough colours. All the ships are grey and don't have pretty lights in them. Oh, go whoosh. The lightsabers are pretty and move fast. Four out of ten. Guy, he's hard, to, pl- he's hard to please, Stuart. I couldn't finish first episode of Ahsoka. I've heard mixed things. Like I've heard some people absolutely fucking loving it and some people absolutely hate it. I'm just, so I don't like the Jedi like, So it's like all of the Star Wars stuff then. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I suppose. I'll, I'll, I'll probably catch up. I didn't like Mandalorian season one at first and then I watched it again and loved it. So. Uh, Xenos has said... But, uh, be- before you, before oh, yeah. you go to Xenos, right, with, uh, I just want to express this to Supernatural Cat alone and just to your ears. We love it when you send it to Twitter. It's our favourite thing. Yeah. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. She's going she's gonna to stop doing it now. Yeah, 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 yeah. She won't hear us whispering. No, 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 no. We're whispering too quiet for the mics to pick up. Yeah. B- b- keep sending it to Twitter slash yeah. X. We love it. Carry on. Xenos has said, I'm still playing Baldur's Gate 3, which has basically been keeping me off any other games. 
I just started Act 3 it. today. Dribbles the clown, send his regards. Fucking dribbles the clown. My girlfriend Is he at got... the circus? He's at the circus, yeah. Okay. It was Oodles Frozen. I'm still here. Yay! You froze. <laughs> oh. You discard. My, my girlfriend got me another game for my birthday, though, which I haven't mentioned in the feedback before now. It's an indie spectacle fighter, I guess. It's called On Guard. Huh. You play as a dashing swordsman, Aladia de Volador. De Volador. Oh, is he French? It's basically Zorro slash Puss in Boots swashbuckle and brawler in which you make absolute fools of the city guards with both your sword skills and the environment. Kick people oh. into walls and tables, throw guitars at someone, drop barrels on them, knock them downstairs, hijack a cannon oh. if you feel particularly mean. But it's all pretty slapstick. Looks like the developer's first game, and I think they've done an excellent job with it. Now, I've seen this before because this has been... Someone has compared this to, like, a brawler meets Dark Souls. It's got a Souls-like attitude Shut towards it. Shut up. But it's pirates, <laughs> and it's got a sense of humour, so it's like Dark Souls meets Monkey Island in places. Oh, I knew ah. I'd got... I knew I recognised the name. I got offered a code for it. Yeah. But I've got too ah. much shit going on. Is it PC only, then? Is that why I've never heard of it? I think it's on PlayStation as well. Shut your mouth. It is on... Steam. No, just Windows. Oh, it's just Windows at the minute. Just PC, yeah. There you go. Doesn't exist yet. It does look good. It does, look, yeah, it does look good, April. actually. I mean, I, I'm into it. It's on my wish list. I just haven't had a chance to buy it yet because, you know, games are big these days. It's too many yeah. games. It's too many games. Yeah. Uh, last up, Best Boy Angry Curtis said, two things for me this week. I went to see Barbie and largely agree more with Candy than the rest of you. I enjoyed it. It's definitely glad I saw it, but I also think it was so hyped up by everyone and came, I think it was a bit overrated. Plus, it had too much singing for my liking. Stig, take it away. Fuck off. Fuck off. It only has two songs in it, and one of them, only one of them's a musical. The rest of it's just background music that's soundtrack. That is not a musical. For a man, it's not a musical. It's a musical. You love La La Land. That has more music in like the first 10 minutes. Wow. Also, but that is, what? to be fair, that is his kind of um, odd, you know, oddball. Yeah. Like, he doesn't like music. He doesn't like he that. La La, yeah. La La Land, yeah. yeah. And his favourite film it? of all time is a music-based film. How can you not hmm. love I Love That? Like, well, well, yeah, well, I'm well, just well, Ken. I, uh, I, I'm, I'm just Ken as well is, is a three and a half minute long gag. It's a joke. Yeah, because it's it deliberate, comes, isn't it? Because it comes out of nowhere because it's in the middle <clears> of that big fight scene. He just starts yeah. singing. <laughs> It's it's a it, nah. It's not a musical. Come on. I can understand um, <clears throat> being hyped up and seeing it, and then if it just if something yeah. doesn't click in there, like oh well, that was a bit hype. You know, when there's hype there, you go in with more expectations. And can I just say, you? when it so, comes to films, nobody agrees with Candy. Usually, you're one of them now. She likes you're one of them now, Kurt. You she you does. super naughty cat and Candy. You're one of them. You're one of them. You're one of them. The film haters club. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, he goes on to say, I've also finished season one of True Detective. I thought it was really good, good by the end. I must admit, it took a while to grab me, and I think it's a better character piece than it is a detective thriller. Fair. Yep. Uh, but by the end, I thought it was a really good show, just not one of my all-time faves. So yeah, a week of things not living, living up to the hype for me. I mean, that's fair. I mean, not everyone yeah. got on with True Detective. I really enjoyed the first season. Do not watch the second season. No, there I is no second, second season. season. I don't think the second season's that bad. It's just not Fucking good. I, I think hated it's it. gash, mate. It's terrible. But yeah, excellent, excellent. Thanks for writing in. Yes. Um, so, as always, links to all our extracurricular activities are in the show notes and at modernescapism.com. Don't forget, because Stig always tells me every week, Kenny Potter. Just come Kenny, out. Kenny Potter. Just come out. Hot off the presses. Steaming hot. Ah, ah. Too hot to handle. It's fantastic. Great show. But you can only get it if you pay us some money. So pay us. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my money, huh? Where's my money? <laughs> Where's my money? Where's my money? It's, it's great. But it's not even just that. If you do become a patron, you get exclusive shit. You get the green room every week. You get, ex I mean, like Planty. You can come on the show. You can produce an episode. God, it's so fucking kind. Oh, it makes me stressed how kind we are. We're just giving shit away. <laughs> but before we leave you, guess what? It's, it's time for a trip down Candyland. Where is she, though? <gasps> and now, what's, what's up, up in Candyland? Candyland? 
Well, I, I, I have sad news to inform you that Candy, <laughs> despite her promises, did not send anything in this week. Uh oh! <laughs> Boo so, this woman! So I'm going to call her out in the worst possible terms and give you a little slice of Candyland that I got this week that I did not want. <laughs> So, obviously, as you know, she has been very excited for Starfield, and we both had the early access to Starfield. We've been playing it, yeah? Yeah. So when, when I seen that she'd been online, I asked her how she was enjoying it. And, you know, we went back and forth on text. So, um, so she was saying, you know, I think it's what people expect. I'm really enjoying it. I said, I got massive Fallout 4 vibes, all that kind of thing. And then I got this text message for her, which I'm just going to read out verbatim, and I'm going to let you oh, two... Oh, this is hot! I'm going to let you two decide what this, what, your feelings on this. Whew. It's just what the doctor ordered for me. Like, you know, in the summer when it's hot and you've been on a walk and you've got an itchy bum hole and you wish you had a toothbrush just to oh. get in there and scratch that itch. Uh, Starfield is that uh, toothbrush. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the, problem, the problem with candy is that she probably uses the same toothbrush to brush her teeth. <laughs> I need to unpack this now. I'm unpacking shit all the time lately. Yeah. One, <laughs> your sphincter is quite a tender part of your body. Don't use a, a, a coarse Abrasive. toothbrush. Abrasive. You could, I had piles this year. You don't want to be giving yourself those. <laughs> Not because you've got a sweaty derriere. Two, you're a fucking rotter, Candy. <laughs> <laughs> You are a rotter. <laughs> oh, God. That, it, it, do you know what? It, that really upset. Do you know when you get that shiver down your spine yeah, yeah, when someone yeah. says something? It just flooded me. Like, I had picturing myself doing it and how awful it would feel. Mm, yeah. Oh, God. Don't scratch your bum hole, guys. Not there so, for scratching. Yeah, this is what <laughs> happens, Candy, when you don't send in a candy land when you take time off. Yeah, it doesn't you need to be impressive. Bugger. It just needs to be a little bit of your men your, your mental state. Well, that was <sighs> that was that was very <laughs> it affected my mental state receiving that text message. I had, I had to go over to Pip and go, Pip, help me, help me unpack this. <laughs> so she, she didn't have a toilet for a while. She's got a gamer bed. She's got a Starfield watch, and she scratches her ass with a toothbrush <laughs> and doesn't wash her hands. And I don't that, understand uh, why she's not married. And on that grand disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on that bombshell, if you're not a patron, goodbye. Oh. We, we still love you, Candy. <laughs> you're rotten. Oh. Yeah. Has he crashed? I think he has. Stig! Stig's died. Oh my god, he's been electrocuted by lightning. <laughs> Dig! We'll wait. Yeah. I need him. You need him. Oh, he's really good at acting. <laughs> Look at this. He looks like Biggie he's used to do. He's done a Biggie. Yeah, he's done a Biggie. <laughs>